the Rap Round Table. Episode 94 of the most dangerous, the most dangerous, most controversial, the safest space to tell your story. That's a fact. New York's number one podcast. Put your ones up. <laughs> New York's number one podcast for hip hop. Maybe not just New York. <sighs> you know, Ooh, globally. The people, <laughs> the people are gonna keep saying, oh, oh, "Oh, you know, the space is yours," and 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 things of that nature. There was a lot of that comments in in the lunch hour sit down with, with Coop or whatever. But let's make it clear. I, and I I feel like we've said this before, but it needs to be reiterated. We are not here for the space involving that particular one area, mm. right? Whereas, like, we, we, we share an audience with a quarter in the hip hop. Some of you venture off onto other podcasts. Yeah, yeah. Salute to y'all. You know what I'm saying? We're not here for this one space to be number one here. We want to be number one everywhere. everywhere. We want to be the pod you listen to. When we was competing previously, it's because they were in front of us and they were the direct competitor. Yes. We're going to compete with every fucking podcast out here. That's a fact. That's it. So I want I want y'all to not don't run with this rhetoric. Oh, y'all number one in this space. Y'all number one in this space. It ain't just this space we want. Who's next? Exactly. If if you if you follow the rap round table and you love the pod, that's like for the people who probably only halfway fuck with us and they only pulling on certain episodes. Mm -hmm. For the for the day ones, the hardcore fans, y'all already know we not here to push nobody out the way. We we not here to, to end nobody's shit. We not here for none of that. All we want to do is yeah. is. To hear in passing one day somebody say, Yo, I really fuck with Rap Round Table. I think they got Facts. the best Call for podcast. Space, you know what I'm saying? We just want niggas yes. to think we're the best, support us as the best, or at least be someone's personal favorite podcast. Because it's with so much podcasts on the internet, the fact that people take time, two hours, two and a half, three hours to sit down and rock with us, that means something. Powerful, man. You know what I mean? So Listen, the game that that space, the game is so saturated. Come on, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? For us to 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 have cut through the way we have in the amount of time, the relatively short amount of time that we've been able to cut through, shout, shout to y'all, all, all of y'all that fuck with us, heavy. If you got a beverage, you know, love, man. cheers. You know what I mean? Oh, we, yeah. we this this ain't no celebration. We not trying to push nobody out the way. We just want to be the best. And if you got a problem, motherfuckers want to be the best. Take that second place energy somewhere yeah. else. We'll Listen. never be content with being second. And salute to those who's like noticing the energy, noticing the upgrades, noticing the improvements, noticing That's the progress, the 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 integrity that comes with this show. You know what I'm saying? A salute to y'all for noticing that. It means <laughs> it's important to the brand, man. Listen, I'm gonna be real, real quick. Uh, when we first got started, I remember telling a, uh, a couple people, "Yo, I'm starting a podcast." <laughs> first reaction was like. Oh, great. Another podcast? Yeah. That's exactly what we need. Like, because everybody was doing a podcast. You know what I mean? Yo, we got 15,000 damn near mm -hmm. strong and growing. Yes, That's sir. fucking with us. The movement is moving. Yo, we, we about to be out of here, man. Pushing. I mean, YouTube, the Twitter space. Don't let us figure out Instagram and TikTok. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, just so you know, if we put energy in the sun, we expect it to come back to us the right way. And we're just going to keep going forward. You know, it's I feel like... time coming, so the Instagram course. about to go crazy. AG, what up? Give us <laughs> you know some I mean? uh, some TikTok tips. Word. That's a fact. So, you know, I, I'm glad that you said that because it's like I've seen a few people, oh, it's yours. Y'all just handing the keys to the rap round table. Why do you think the internet stops here? The internet is vast. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. so many vast valleys and peaks, highs and lows. You know right. what I'm saying? We experienced We've this, experienced it. The journey. It, it, look, it, the, these are probably the same people that heard Illmatic and just wanted Illmatic <laughs> over and over and over again. You no know I mean? expansion. We chasing this you know I mean? They shit. heard They hear Griselda and they just want the same Derringer beats with the same pianos over and over and over again. Gotta well, you know, elevate. Gotta man. expand. But guess what? At least they know with us, the rap round table is gonna be us. Whether it's 15,000, 50,000, 100,000, this is a show. We're going to talk our shit. We we talk our shit. You know what I mean? And if that makes you uncomfortable, this is not the podcast for you. Big if you think not wanting to be in first place is okay, this is not the podcast for you. All right? You know what I mean? First place on the internet, not the space. The space. I hate that. <laughs> now I hate space. that phrase. The space. <laughs> so, like, yeah, we got to retire that now. We gotta, it's a, we gotta like, retire that. Bro, 
Because the thing is, a quarter of the hip hop is gonna carry on. Like, you think Mike D's just gonna fucking disappear? We still got a scrap of him. <laughs> still going. He's still here. You know what I mean? Still he's gonna not gonna, gonna stop. There. And Coop's gonna go build a whole other. Op. Nigga, nigga, <laughs> yeah, nigga. You know hip hop talk. He got the Nas what? plug at, as his, his Listen, right hand. He's not gonna stop. At, yo, yo, nigga. All this of is, a sudden, like, this is New want? York in '94, like, nigga. We <laughs> at war. We can collab. There's gonna be some features, but we scrapping. And now, now he pause. He's able to like cut loose. You know what I'm saying? Now he's able we got to go a whole. Rocky. We got listen. And the thing is, not only should you, you send cooking tonight already. Not only do you have a situation where Coop moves on, he's with somebody who's plugged into the industry and connected to people who fans in that space already like. Yeah. To win. So we gonna be scrapping again. It's gonna be some fire. We gonna throw the darts. Coop, Coop throws darts. I'm gonna throw the darts. Sing gonna throw the darts. The motherfuckers already said, "Don't listen to the rap round table." She said that. You know, you know, you did. We got the tweets to prove we it. it. So you know, Bro. we gonna be battling again. We're all I, competitors, I, man. I, 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 pro- I promise you, the worst thing that we can feel right now is that we won. Right. Facts. Because then. You know what I mean? We get complacent. We're just going to phone it in. That's not what we want to do. That's nah. not what y'all want us to do. I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? This shit made us more hungry. And for all of y'all, last message before we get into the pod. For all of y'all who don't watch the rap round table, who pulled in for, for the lunch hour, who thought it was cool to like try to throw darts at us when y'all don't watch the show, <laughs> y'all don't comment, y'all not in the chat. I'm talking specifically to y'all. Let's be clear. Since y'all left our chat and y'all left our environment, the vibe has been immaculate. <laughs> Evanescent. <laughs> we did not miss you. <laughs> okay? Let's be clear. The people who've been pulling there week after week as we've elevated as a show, those are the people we love and they and they know who they are. And they fuck with us. Even even like, you know, I ain't gonna call her name, but she pulled in, we hardly see her. She always talking sideways. You about this close to get packed up to be <laughs> one of them too. <laughs> Shit. He started packing. Dubsies. Talked about. Yeah, you know I mean, so it's like, all of y'all, don't come back. We good, we good over here. Stay over y'all there. Pulled in, y'all brought the negative energy we didn't miss. You can go. Go go, go to Hip Hop Talks, okay? <laughs> fuck out of here. Hit rap clown table. Yeah, fuck you. You know what I mean? <laughs> all, these, all these people so tough, hide them behind, like, not even a face. It just be some anime. Avatars, man. Avatars, bro. And they try to give niggas pounds if they bump it to us on the trainer in the street. I hate that shit, B. <laughs> Stop talking crazy to niggas you want to give pounds to and take pictures with. But anyway, you can find a wrap round table on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, and of course, Twitter. The beat you hear in the background is brought to you by Sincere Beats. He makes beats. Holla at me. His Instagram is strictly a beat page now. So if you need any beats, you can go directly to Sincere Beats on Instagram. Holla at that man directly. Yes, yes. And, and you can you can ask can transact some business. And make that happen, you know yes, what I mean? Yes. Make a lot sure you nice. A lot of y'all artists have been tapping in, asking for beats. So who's I've seen the comments? Who made these beats? Now go right to his Instagram. You know what I mean? It's all is there for me. Leroy Green, you a front of I'm calling. I'm putting on wax. You full of shit. <laughs> it's been a minute, Leroy. Now I'm, I'm putting on wax, Leroy. You full of shit because because you ask for certain things, then you got the beats, and now I don't know, and I'm gonna take some time, and I'm walking to Atlanta. No, like <laughs> I'm walking to Atlanta. Listen to me, bro. <laughs> Nah, because he was going to Atlanta for Mad Long. You put a lot of sauce on their paws. You're right. (laughs) But the point is, he asked for beats. The beats were sent, and then he saw Pump Faking. It's like, bro, we we are are type A over here. It's time to work. It's time to work. Either you is or you ain't. So when you watch this episode, just know that Joff said you full of shit. If you don't have no new music, don't ask for no more beats until you produce what you got already. Put that fire together, Leroy. Is you is or is you You ain't. You want to clock, man. Come on, bro. A rapper. Come on now. Macito's not with us tonight. Um, he got to take care of some personal business. Ain't no, yeah. you know what I mean? Don't give, don't worry. You know what I mean? Like, he ain't no <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> he can be wildin'. Wait, he, he wound up on Hip Hop Talks next. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Everything is good. No, what's going table. on? Chill. May Cito has some personal business to attend to, so he's not with us tonight. No May Sega. He'll be Miss Mace, you know what I'm saying? But let's let's Salute get Mace. let's get into the podcast. Let's, let's, let's do what it. we do. So yes, before we get into our latest top five, we're going to pivot just a little bit. Mm. You know, with all of this rap beef going on and maybe not street beef, but like lyrical competition. Some of y'all think Drake can't rap and he don't put lyrical next to his name. Whatever. Like Drake can rap. But with all this big three talk about Drake, Kendrick, J. Cole. It got us to thinking at the rap round table about the previous big three, Biggie, Jay-Z, and Nas. Mm. 
who is or who are the most successful big three between the two of those or or who's just the better big three like if you had to choose a three in their era and all the other things included who has done it the best as a big three mm -hmm. so to say the rap stop as our resident historian here we will let you bat lead off with that topic that's a real interesting question um and i yeah you know, I'll, I'll be completely honest catching me off guard a little bit because I knew we was going to talk big three but I didn't know that was going to be the question so okay. this is going to be straight off the dome we got to have some conflict you know, you know what I mean yes, sir. Uh, that's interesting to me because like alright let's start with Kendrick I feel like Kendrick uh, is almost like uh, a hybrid of Biggie and Nas mm. like he's he's got like the storytelling ability of a Nas he's got the, the social awareness of a Nas but like the musicality and the 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 delivery, the the way he raps almost like a jazz musician. That's that's like all Biggie right there. Um, Drake would obviously go up head to head with Jay Z. Pause. Uh, no no Diddy. Um, <laughs> the day. And then you have J Cole. So I guess ah uh, man, I guess if I have like Kendrick up against Biggie. J. Cole against Nas, Drake against Hove. I'm going to have to go with the Golden Era Big Three. Okay. And it, it just is what it is, man. It just is what it is. Biggie, it, Ke Kendrick and Biggie are, I honestly, I feel it's close. Nas, I'm sorry, Cole fans, Nas washes Cole. J. beats Drake kind, fairly handedly. So I'm going with the Golden Era Big Three. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Dini, talk to me, gang. I think it really depends on what you want. You get what I'm saying? We um, go to politicians. It's not not politician shit. It's um, it's factual shit. Like if I want a classic, it all depends on what you like. It, man. It not it, it does, nigga. If you want a steak, <laughs> nigga, you want a, you want a hamburger, nigga. Like it depends on the vibe you want. Like if I want like a classic hip hop album from the soul '90s classic shit, like from the era. You know what I'm saying? Our era. I, there's no question I'm gonna go with um, Big J and Nas. You get what I'm saying? I know what, what I'm gonna get. I know I'm gonna get some of the hardest bars of all time as far as lyrically. I know I'm gonna get um, a vibe because two out of three niggas are vibey niggas. You know what I'm saying? Nas can get into that bag, not his genuine, not his usual bag, but he can get into that bag. So I know I still get like great music as far as to like turn up to. I'll get great bars. I get great street records. The street records those three could have came up with together, mm. like would have just been anthems, you know. It's but when it comes true, to, true, true. but if I wanted something, you know, just to like, I just feel like those three can make something crazy too. Like when you add Kendrick's abilities with Drake's ability to actually walk the fine line the way Biggie and Jay does, where I can I can make a great rap song lyrically Monday. I can make a. Something for the Jamaican ladies to dance to on Tuesday, and I can make something to get like the whole rest of the nation going through on Wednesday. I think that's an ability that a lot of people don't have as artists, you know. And Drake mm -hmm. has that like in in Gallon. So, and then that you add J Cole. J Cole's probably one of the more relatable mm -hmm. rappers. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, there's there's niggas that listen to Big and they're like, damn, this nigga's nice, but they that's they don't they don't understand that story. They're selling crack to feed my daughter. They can't. You know what I'm saying? They can't grasp the concept. That's a them problem. They're, you're right. You're right. But I, I feel like a lot of niggas can grasp I I'm in college. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm. A lot of niggas can grasp like self-awareness. Wearing, wearing thrifted shirts and riding bikes. Yeah, and growing your hair out. A lot, a lot of <laughs> shit. I just feel like J. Cole, is, he's very talented and he's very relatable and he's, he's, a, he's a lyrical boss man. He, he is the, the everyman. There you go. So yeah. I feel like the combination of those, you know, where you have... The ability to create the great vibe, the ability to relate to everyone, and the ability to pretty much go anywhere he wants in Kendrick. Like that's that's a dangerous combination. I feel like it'll be like it'll be like Atlanta. If you can mix New York and Atlanta and create a sound, I feel like that's something that will be created between Cole, mm. Kendrick. It would be like the best of the rapping and the best of well, the like turn up. You that, get what I'm saying? That is one thing I did not consider is the the different regions that uh, would be combined through Kendrick, King Drake, Southern and Cole, if they want versus versus just New York. Drake is a community could go any bag well, he I wants. I mean, not just New York. There's Brooklyn and Queens. Drake can go which are any bag he also wants. Also, worlds apart. Kendrick like, can can kind of. If you're like, from New York, you if you know, you know, no Jalen, no <laughs> from the block. 
<laughs> you get what I'm saying? But it just it's it's it would be great music. It's just different types. I feel like one would be more street, and one would be more like set to a to a vibe. You get what I'm saying? Mm. But hmm. I, if I had to choose, obviously I'm going with with, with the New York Big Three. Oh, thank you. There okay. You go. All that to say that. I, I gotta mean, give props. <laughs> gotta give props. I think they all would do something amazing. I just I'm gonna be honest. I'm from that class. I I don't mind when Dini is, is, is talking like this. No, I always say the shows at its best when Dini is, is active and, and, and getting his points. He's out with Lamar Odom. When Lamar Odom start cooking on the Lakers with power, Kobe and Rings. D Fish, they unstoppable. When Lo feel like getting a couple rebounds and chilling, it's like yo, Lo, come on, so you six eleven and you Cross play the like Magic Johnson three, sometimes. You know, you know what I mean. <laughs> We getting we getting six man of the year low tonight. You know what I mean? But um I guess all right, you know, New York Vice Three is on the way. Yes, sir. We gotta talk, we gotta plug that, of course. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? But when you look at the three, of course, Biggie, Jay Z, and Nas, what needs to be said about those three names? They 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 represent our childhood, our adulthood, our love of rap and a multitude of ways a lot of debates we have those guys are like the infrastructure the constructs of a lot of our rap opinions they are attached to those three artists even more so because we got big got taken away from us jay-z and us but if i gotta be fair i gotta go with the current three you know what i mean hmm. i gotta go with cole kendrick and drake and this is strictly on fairness because big was taken from us hmm. you know what i mean Jay fake retired a couple of times. Nas has taken his breaks. You can make the argument as far as sheer dominance at the top is concerned that Drake Kendrick and, and J. Cole have been way more dominant for way longer consistently than our personal three. Hmm. That's how I'm looking at it. Like, well, Kendrick took his five year hiatus. I'll say that. But Drake is outside regularly. Cole is outside regularly. Their their appearances. Kendrick is Kendrick done tilted hip hop upside down with one verse yeah. on a party record. They have, you know. It's, it's, you know what? That's for all the detractors out there. Since all the haters. The all the haters in here. <laughs> all the non believers. He pops out on one popular record. There you go. Like he can't, like he can't do it. Set and the let's world be on clear. fire. And the thing is, th those three, anytime they pop out, even if you don't like Aubrey, I understand. But if you, if he got, if you get a feature, the Aubrey, is there anything better than the Aubrey stimulus? Nah, it's, it's it gold. Has, has instant. Am I asking a question to the chat? Is one rapper's impact that great? Can you name somebody else who, if you get that mm. feature, you're sanctioned. You got at least a three year I rap was, career. I, I that would have been Hove prior I, to. I don't even. I don't even want to say this. So you got to say it. But it's been it's been like a like a good ten years of like Drake hopping on records and them shits just blow up, blow the fuck up. They're out of here. Yeah. The artists out of here. Yeah. And then when I looked up those plaques, Aubrey got one hundred and eighty seven. <laughs> but Ridiculous. then his contemporaries are in the forties. Like these guys have controlled rap as a three longer than to me Big Pop, Big Jay Z, and Nas have, and and they and they're still. Arguably in their problem. We don't know when they're gonna slow down. So I gotta say, as far as they might not, of course not, they're not better anywhere near big Jay-Z and Nas, but as far as overall careers, albums, impact, yeah. I gotta go well, with the current three. That's a good if, argument. If that if that's if that's the conversation, I mean, yeah, like uh the 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 classic, the the golden era big three, mm -hmm. they're you know what I mean? They're, 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 there's a handicap there. You know okay. what I mean? Big Big was only Take around for like yeah. three years. Five years max. If you count That's like, fair. You know what I mean? Uh, 92 with Mary J. Blige and them. But uh -huh. Yeah. I but, mean, if I we're mean, talking about would... like careers and dominance, different topic, different I, conversation. I mean, I I'm can't. I'm talking about rap for rap. It, but, oh, mm. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Ball for ball, we know. It can't, you know what I mean? Well, the only all, all those little nuances matter for something, though. You well, know I mean, saying? it's all inclusive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if we just talking about bars of the big three currently... I, I think Kendrick's the only one who could probably even sniff the ring. Mm. And it's not even because of the bars. It's just his presence on track. So he has enough yeah. presence to where he won't, he won't sound out of his depth next to those guys. Like Cole might arguably rap better than Kendrick, like lyrically, but as far as the, to the total package, I think Kendrick is the only one who could probably s put on some fatigues and some Tims and go to New York and, and do a four-man cypher with them and, and, and live. Nah, he, Kendrick got more presence than Santa, bro. Like he's he could do that. And, you know, not to be that godsend, and I'll pass it to you because I know he's about to say something. I don't know if back in our day, 
they wouldn't even allow Drake and Cole to probably rap in them ciphers. Yeah. They'll be banned like the pink polar yeah. wood. Nah. Look, I, I'm gonna keep it one thousand. Um Drake Drake can Drake can really, really Easily, rap. Yes. yes. Drake can really rap. Um he he has in terms of presence, it, it I feel like the presence is cosplayish. I feel like the pre- mm. that, that might that might be that might be rough. I feel like the, the presence That's is pretty something pretty accurate, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean <laughs> I, I just don't want to set you know, I'm trying to be fair, but the, yeah, like the, the presence is something that he has fabricated or he's built up for himself. You know what I mean? Oh. It's not something I feel like comes naturally. I think he learned to have that presence. Which is, to be fair, is is in and of itself like yeah, you know commendable. commendable. Yeah, you know what I mean. But he's not from the cloth. Oh. You know what I mean. Cole, Cole again, he's nice. Present the presence has built up over time to where he's at now. But again, kind of feels like it's like like the cloth was not within him. Oh. You know what I mean. Kendrick is, I feel, the only one that that really came from that cloth. You know what I mean? Not within him. That's a bar. (laughs) Kendrick is from that cloth, and you know, you 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 could you can you know start arguing about like, you know, the the pimp of butterflies, and he goes too left, and like he does the weird voices, but when it's time to bar it up, he bars it up. He's from that cloth. You know what I mean? I see that because it's like, again, like growing up, let's go back to the lunchroom. You know, presence was just as important as being nice. You come to that lunch table, four niggas is rhyming. You better come through and bring your shit. You better be loud as fuck. You better be Facts. extra as fuck. You can't just be the, you know what I mean? Like, you got to be like, ah, ah, ah. you heard that kind of, <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, you got, you got to bring that extra, like, look, look at Kendrick's freestyle that he did on the BET Cyphers many moons ago, like. Boy, oh, yeah, yeah. the control verse. Just as much as he was calling niggas out, like he even the joint with Future just not too long ago. When he gets on a song and he gets that, ah, that, that growl, like, <laughs> like like it's like yo, you want to fight? You know what I mean? Got that dog in him. There you go. You know what I mean? It's yeah. probably because he's short. You know what I mean? Like short <laughs> niggas. That BET cipher was crazy. Now that you mean, he said, "I got my thumb on hip hop and, and my foot on the back of your ass." ass. After Mask gets done last, last life, like he just the energy, bro. He just. Gets in a different realm when it's that go time. Got goosebumps, listen. To there you go. So it's like Kendrick is the only one I think who can rhyme next to those guys and sound like he belong there. But it, but if we just talking about overall career dominance, longevity, I'm gonna pick the current three. That's mm. that's where I'm at with it. Yes, Big was taken away, so there's a caveat. But because of that caveat, and it's been it's 2024. You could say all th- all forty three got three of these guys. Part of me started around 09, 2010. Mm-hmm. You took 14, mm-hmm. 15 years of this yeah. shit just cooking. Dominate stats, stats on stats. Been doing it. Who's done it? What rappers have done this? The next three gonna have up big shoes to fill. Yeah. <laughs> what next three? You Where's right. the next three? You are? right. <laughs> shit. They gotta come through sometime. It was telling me little baby. It was yeah. telling me. Can we talk NBA about young baby boy? for a second? Let's do it. Is it over? Oh, it's a rap for little baby. I, I, I've heard, been called it. I heard the new single. Yeah. It's looking like it, man. I, I haven't heard. He hasn't Cooked. went on a bad run like this. And this is a bad run that this kid's on. He couldn't miss for a long time, bro. It's tough, bro. The street's saying that he need he need Gunna back. Mm. I mean, Gunna did have a great album, but it's like, I guess for me, just listening to the different regions and everything, and and what rap is sounding like coast to coast. Do we does do do the people want what little baby brings to the table? Yeah, if it's fire, like if you if you was saying melodic, sh- hat, <laughs> nah, I, that, 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 I don't know if that's winning anymore. It, 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 I think no. there's still a space for it. I just think he's it's not a, doing it as well as he used nah, to do. It. I mean, Jar brings up a point. I mean, we just heard the the future and Metro album. It was. There wasn't all that melodic singing on that. Nigga, shit. Future was, was some. Future was he hardly was, mumbling. Even he, his words are very legible on that album. Yeah, there was a, there was a couple of tracks where they were like kind of vibey singing. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a part of Future's runway. Though, yeah, but so. he's singing. Lil Baby's trying to rap, harmonize, yeah. harmonize. <laughs> And again, even Future on this project, hey. I was just been, the, 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 the nah, fucking, he, was, he was cooking the mumbling rap. He was rapping, even if the raps weren't the best. We know, we yeah, know, yeah. we know, we know. But he was clear. He was concise. He wasn't bullshitting. 
stayed on top. And I'm looking around and I'm seeing like with all the look, the subgenres that we were the first podcast to ever talk about subgenres and rap. Go back to the 2019 episodes if you don't believe us. We were the first to talk about subgenres in rap. With all these subgenres, mm-hmm. the one connective tissue is that you have to be good again. Like, yes. like the era of the whack nigga is starting to fade away. Like you seen Caribou pop outside with with, with that bullshit nasty work. And there's so many people up in arms. They trying. Like, it's like people are actively trying to push the whack niggas away. Mm. You know what I'm it's, saying? It's bad, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like you know, like back in the days, there used to be like the the hip hop caricature. And, but right. there was like one. It was like a rarity yeah. to see it. I feel like most of the artists nowadays are the a, caricatures. It wasn't a rarity. It was just in one region, and we had a problem with it. But it, <laughs> you, you didn't see. I mean, let's say we had ten rappers, though. We, like eight out of ten wasn't caricature. I feel like most of the artists today mm. are kind of in, in that va- in that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Most yeah. of them are just. Nah, I feel you, but I'm a, I'm gonna hold on to my bars because I, I have a lawn segment. <laughs> oh, there you go. Copy. Real Coming quick, up. I just I'll ask Dean. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil the lawn segment. If you look around at all the hot niggas right now, how much of them are singing melodic rappers? There's not many. Most niggas are actually rapping. We're in that the 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 great reset, as we so called it. Mm-hmm. We're in that time now. Niggas is rapping. There's still, a, I mean, the, there's still a spot for the club, bro. People go out. There's still always gonna be a spot for that. But in this era right now, 2024, and we've getting some of the best rapping as far as like bars we've gotten in a long time. Like niggas is back outside for 2024. They took the break off in 2023, but they back outside. That's a fact. I mean. Listen, man, little baby. To me, he's done. It's, I think it's 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 rough. That last song was really bad, really uh, bad. Then with the painted nails, did you see that? Yeah, that don't help. What's going on, yo, little baby's been bugging out since them hugs. You got that picture when he <laughs> was hugged up with them dudes. Yeah, it ain't been the same, bro. It's, it's been really unruly since. It's it's, it's nasty work out here, mm. and, and and I just I love to see. It. I don't want to see nobody fail. You know what I'm saying? I don't want nobody to fail in their careers. That, that's just not something that we do. We don't wake up and wish bad on niggas. But I will say, because I love rap so much, I love to see the bullshit be weeded out of rap. And that's not to say Lil Baby is bullshit, but I just think that what he does is not rap to me. Like, he's not rapping. Like, that's singing. Call it what it is. That's, you know what I mean? That's not rap to me. And it's like, Lil Baby, bro, look at the space. Figure some shit out. Like, maybe you need to tweak your approach. Scale it back. Go maybe, go maybe listen to some mi- go go watch some rich homie Quan tape or some shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Find a way to balance out the harmonizer with a little bit of aggression. Get a little more aggressive. Maybe just call Gun and see how he's doing. You don't got to make music with him. Just uh, uh, just have a conversation with him. Maybe that'll also, spark something. Lay off the perks. You think it's the perks? Yo, them perkies, man. So you gotta be careful with them that. No, no, you could, I mean, you can censor it out if you what want. Do you mean but by I mean, I I know, like I know what I see. The perkies is calling. You know what I mean? And what do you mean by that? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, are you a cop, sir? Like, uh, no, I'm, so, I'm sorry, but it's, yeah. uh, you know, it has a certain effect on, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and the lean and yourself. all that shit. Like, but that's, I'm sure he was on that type of shit when the music was good. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. yo, little baby, has an effect over time. watch the tape, realize that the space they don't want you. Maybe take a break, don't force it. Nobody wait till niggas start saying, you know, we haven't heard from Lil Baby nah, in a while. He did they take know, a break, though. That, I mean, no, uh, I he mean, did take a break, and the shit still came back. Yeah, mid. so I mean, there's, there's there's that, but uh, you know, the we constantly say here, like, mm. a, a, a break is a death sentence, true, in this, in true. this climate, in this era, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. And yes, we know Lil Baby's still rich, and he doesn't care about what the rap round table has to say. Yes, 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 we know, <laughs> we know. Well, let's move on. We shouldn't have been having concerns about who the next three was and what, what the state of hip hop was because the blog era was supposed to be the era that was going to be the next golden era mm. for hip hop. It was supposed to produce a multitude of artists who who were both having the street credibility, the lyrical dexterity, and a connection to the everyman that, to really like push it to the next level. But as time has gone along, the blog era has kind of started to you know fade away. The big three are doing eight things, but what about the rest of these guys? Mm. You know what I mean? So with that being said, it's time for another installment of the Rap Round Table Top 5 series. Yes, yes. And with this one, we, we hate that not have Matt Cito here, but he will be represented on this episode. The Top 5 Blog Era Rappers. Mace, I got words for you because I've I, I seen your list. <laughs> he cheated a little bit. Yeah, he did. He cheated. Shout out to you, Mace Cito. Like, all right, we're not going to spoil it. We're going to get into it. You know what I mean? So again, chat. You know, these are our opinions. This is not the definitive five. If you're a goofball running into the comment section crying about our personal fives, you're a dickhead. 
And I'm talking to specific people mm-hmm. who did that. Mm-hmm. They watched the episode, heard us say, these are our personal vibes. This is not a definitive list of any kind. This is uh, well, who we choose. We, we gave whole explanations for why we picked the shit, right? I'm sure y'all, and y'all, y'all still complain. So if you decide to complain about the five now after we told you all of that, the chat is going to put you on in the chat. If you come and ask certain questions, they're going to put you on. Shout out to Mike H's and then Miss LB's who generally cleanse the chat when people ask certain questions. Listen, don't be a dickhead. So see the rap snob. Yes, yes. Your five is first, sir. I bet. Um, now, quick question, though. Mm-hmm. Just to uh, make sure that the rules are set. Uh, are we including the big three? Or yeah, they, is they, it outside they're all of part it? of it. Yeah. All right, bet. All right. Um, so uh, I'll give everyone one guess uh-huh. as to who my number one is. I'm Kendrick. starting from the top down. Kendrick. We K-Dot. Know you sure about that? If it's not Kendrick, is, then who? Is, is that your final answer? Yes. Yes. Walt? <laughs> uh, yeah, big surprise! It's Kendrick. Kendrick is number one on my top five blog ever list. Of course, of course it is. Uh, you know what I mean. Big surprise! It's Kendrick. Woo-hoo. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> wow. So, uh, <laughs> of course, you know what I mean. You know what Listen, mean? Uh, K- Kendrick might be top five. Uh, you know, let me let me not piss Come people on, off. Man. Five all time. Let me not p- piss people Come off. Come on, man. Let me keep it moving. Number two. Now, here here's the thing. I'm I'm torn on number two because a, am I keeping this purely personal, or am I incorporating the sheer impact and trying to be fair to this space? Mm. So, I, in in my attempt to not be s- such a snobbish dickhead, okay, uh, and be fair to the space, I'm gonna I'm gonna put Drake number two. Okay, you hmm. know what I mean? Interesting, sin. Um. I mean, it just Drake is what it is. You know what I mean? Now, as far as like the artistry of and, and the craft of it all, obviously Kendrick is going to be number one for me. But I, I can't front on on everything that Drake has done. I can't front on the run. I can't front that he had he has songs that I enjoy immensely. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you know what I mean. While he doesn't have the classic albums to me, uh, Drake is going to be number two. Um, Cole at a close third, right? So the big three, top three, right? No big surprises. Number four, Damn, Jarv, no, no words for Cole. Jar, yeah. Jar, Jarv might be. I mean, Cole, look, no build up for J Cole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no nothing. No, okay, yeah. So Cole, we about to we about to get retweeted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, let, we let the beat breathe and all. Like, wait, he not gonna say nothing else. <laughs> Is quiet. <laughs> Don't Listen, do him like that. The okay. Uh, let, let me let me give Cole some words. Yes. Um, the the current run that he's on right now is unmatched by Kendrick and Drake combined. Maybe even. You know what I mean? In terms of the output, lyrically, in terms of the impact on the verses he's putting out, uh-huh. he's in full album mode right now. Uh, the 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 build up to the album, the the rollout that he's putting together is fire. Um, the the last album that he put out, uh, one of my favorite albums from him. You know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean? Cole, 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 like we said earlier, Cole is like the the every man uh, in the game. You know what I mean? He's the people's champ right now. So you got you got to give him his due. You know what I mean? And I'm uh, I'm absolutely loving. Everything that he's putting out right now, he's getting, he's get, he gets the game excited every time he comes out. Uh, the rollout that he's putting out, getting the game excited. So, Cole is number three. Number four, Jarv might be upset by this. Oh. Got to be Freddie Gibbs. Really? And, hmm. and honestly, Freddie really? Gibbs has. Fre- Freddie Gibbs might he might give Cole a run for his money for the third spot because while he may not have the presence in the game hmm. the way Cole has and the other top two have. Interesting. Album wise, uh, I got to push back, but I'm gonna let you. Play. Album wise, <laughs> the albums. Now I know you know what I mean like he, he had his issues with Benny the Butcher and. and ex-baby mama and he's looking a little little clownish out here 
Now he rapping at the highest level of his career, but though, so he music, can look as clownish as he yeah. wants right now. But musically, Triple S, you know, oh, sold, sold separately. Closest thing to a C for me. Oh. Um, you know what I mean? The Alchemist joint, Alfredo, Bandana, Fire. Piñata. Like, that's a crazy run. Yeah. I don't know about of that. Of quality What's music. That? What do you mean by that? Fred. <laughs> What's that, brother? What? <laughs> <laughs> Gibbs? Gibbs. Gibbs is top five. Top five. Gibbs ain't pop off to the Griselda era, though. Gibbs is top. He, he's, and he's he changed his whole sound. That's, Gibbs. That's, he's blog, blog Gibbs, era, bro. He's blog, blog Gibbs era. ain't Griselda era, Gibbs. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, wow. it's, it's definitely blog. He's nah. blog era. What's he's that? in there. Ah, bro. I mean, What's if, that, if, if it counts through the years, I think the years are like, if I'm not mistaken, 07 to like, what, 2014? And uh, and number five, you know what? Be, because I, I had somebody else at number five, but because I conceded uh, my personal feelings to put Drake at number two, I'm going to go purely personal at number five. Okay. J Elect. J Electronica. Yeah, Yo, you're such a hater, bro. <laughs> my top. <laughs> you're a my, hater, my, bro. My, nah. He's, J nah, Electronica is bro. top five blog ever. You're a hater, bro. Get what you mean? Guy. A hater because of what? How is Sean not in that five, bro? Sean is. You got J. You got not J. Elect and Freddie Gibbs over Sean from the blog era. Absolutely. <laughs> one nigga, did, one nigga blew up after the blogs were phased 100%. out. One hundred. Nobody was not talking about this nigga until. He's still a product. He's a product of it. But he didn't get no success from it. He's a product of it. He had to go underground and lit. The the J. output. Is, the output is the output. So what Sean? Right. So what Sean did? Nothing. Not, not six. Damn. I got Schoolboy Q. Woo! You got to be in there. You got Sean over Schoolboy Q? You're not putting Sean over I got over Sean and Q? Q over Jay Alec and Gibbs. Damn, man. That's you. That sounds like a you problem. Damn uh, it, Jarvi. Uh, but look, but like I said, if I... If I'm, I'm disgusted right now. If, if, <laughs> if, if, if I am going to concede on Drake, I got to have my, my personal, you know what I mean? My personal time. It's, your, personal five, it's your five. It's your five. It's your five. Dog. I got to represent me at my core. J Electronica, that boy's a problem. Is he? He is. What is he proving? Uh, 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 exhibit? Exhibit C. Did Two exhibits. And A. Exhibit A and C. And then he got outshined on his album that we waited 100 years for. That's a that's, fact. That's yo, a fact. Exhibit yeah. A and C yeah. are better. That's a fact, yeah. Yeah. Everything Sean has put out. What the fuck? I'm not everything. Ba- nah, wow. Wow. Yeah, bro. Come on, bro. Like, come on. That's hard. Like, who Pause. is this guy? Come on. Where did he bro. come from? This, this is and a why hater list. Like <laughs> I stand, I stand by it. Go ahead, DD. Go ahead. School, man. Uh, Shit. J Electronica, top five blogger. Right. I mean, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, no white jacking that, bro. <laughs> Sounds good. I hear you, bro. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm probably get, I probably get cooked for mine too. I probably get cooked for mine too, so I'm on your type of time, sin. Uh, at, at number five, I got Wiz. Is Wiz a blog era artist? Yeah. Hell oh, yeah! Oh, he, oh, he, Hell the, yeah! Uh, From the dirt with it too, no, bro. No, I was struggling because I I wanted to put Wiz on my list, but I wasn't sure if he was considered. Like, nah, he's blog right there. Era. First album, know. first tape, I think was in oh nine. So he he, he fit right in the in the in the pocket. You get what I'm saying? What I'm saying is this, man. Say what you want about Wiz. You look at Wiz today, you just see like this. Dreaded weed smoking connoisseur who kickboxes. You know what I'm saying? You see Amber Rose's baby father. Man, but when them tapes was coming out, man, Kush mm. and OJ, you know what I'm saying? Like flight school, like all oh my God. Like he had his run. He really and you really watch him come from the bottom. You really watch Lil the with the little baby fro, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? From from black he and had yellow. Every nigga with the little with gold the, patch in his in come their on, head and bro. All like that. he he he's say what you want about him, he's culture though. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It was it was all authentic. I never looked at Wiz and never felt like this nigga's faking for the people. Wiz has always done it his way. He's he's one of the few niggas that really carved his own lane mm. and done it his way. Shout out to that Khalifa Kush. Shed me some. Um Number four. That was that was that was a great breakdown. Just Wiz, Wiz people, is culture. People 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 were gonna cook me for it, but mm, if you nah, listen to them, go and listen to them tapes. A man. lot listen of Midwest cabin niggas, fever. real Midwest niggas, not them. You know what I mean? Who Big Sean had a hats. great verse on the you know Cabin I mean? Fever on um, tape. Like, listen to them old, listen to them old joints. Listen to Deal or No Deal. At number three, I'm mean, number four. 
I got to go with Cole, man. I, I got to I gotta give respect where it's due. Okay. Another nigga that grinded from the bottom and, and made his own way. Like, I, 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 I cook J. Cole, but mm. to see where he started, you know what I'm saying, waiting out in the cold for, to hand over tape, to, to being the guy who's pretty much, like, running the feature game right now. Like, if you want the, the feature today mm-hmm. is Cole. I know we say we just talked about it being Drake as far as if you want to blow your record up. But if you want bars... You want that verse that, yo, did you hear that verse? It's going to be a cold verse You got outside of a Kendrick verse on a future album. You know what I'm saying? Um, number three, Nikki. Like, we got to keep it a bean. Nikki, is a, that's blog era. I don't think so. Nikki don't count as blog era? She, she after Drake, I don't, I don't even think Nikki would consider herself as part of the blog because Nikki had to scrap for everything. She kind of, she's a part of the blog Nikki era, was popping though. before the blogs. I was saying Nikki Minaj name in like 06, 07. Mace, Mace is right in the cusp He would know right. But not, what I'm saying I personally heard Nikki's name in Like around 06, 07 bro when, That's that's, that's when the blog year Ever started 06, 07 Yeah mm. uh, Cause the, look The years are murky You know what I mean I know the, the Freddy pick When was Freddy's first take? Might be a gray area When okay. was Freddy's first still take? keeping it You know what I mean But Nikki You know what I mean I would say she counts I would say she counts To me I, I I would consider Nikki Part of the mixtape era More so than the blog era You you could do that too You get what I'm saying But I put it there Solely because like The accomplishments Like for a long time I had Lauren Hill As the greatest female rapper Of all time Solely because of The lyrical (laughs) ability what Come on bro Like I I could I I, That's why I uh, Really my nigga nigga? You Like what are you I'm so hard on Lauren Hill I don't give Lauren Hill What the fuck are you talking about as much as I cook her, I don't give her a pop for the, for the score, my nigga. I'm not even going to let you. What the fuck I'm, are you talking like, about? Reaching over and grabbing a nigga phone. Not for the score. The that was some of the best about? rapping from We're not disputing. Anyone. Let's be clear, chat. I Viewers, cook her for miseducation. Let's be clear. We're not disputing Lauren's place. We're disputing the source. Okay. Because you spent most of the life of this podcast killing I, Lauren. I, I cook Lauren Hill for the miseducation because I believe it's an RB out more than it's a hip-hop album. So how album. is she the best rapper? Uh, Cause the bar she put the down, rapping hey, ability, the rapping ability, the bars, okay. you know what I'm saying? Which like, is literally all I've ever said, yeah. and this man will and he argue, argue you to down. death. No, I, both, but it's specifically for the miseducation of Lauren Hill. That's really what my real gripe is. Right. I thought I was getting a rap album when she said she's gonna put a mu- an album out. I got an R and B album, which was not entertainment. Really, what I wanted. You get what I'm saying? I, oh, and she never put nothing else after that, so I crucified for it. Uh-huh. Hold me guilty. Mm-hmm. It's Deanie man. Sue me. Um, Nikki though, like. Changed my, she brought me around. You get what I'm saying? Like, arguably, the hardest female rapper, like, probably to touch a mic, bro. Like, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? When you put everything together, the bravado, the skills, the package, you get what I'm saying? Like, she's, she got it, bro. Like, I don't I don't think anyone's fuck with her. If you're fucking with her with the look, you don't got it with the skills. Mm-hmm. If you got it with the skills, you don't got it with the look. It's like, all the joints that rap would possibly rap better don't look she's better. She's the best balance of everything. Th- there you go. You get what I'm saying? And she knows how to move units. She knows how to work a room. She just... I mean, she's a character, and I don't mean that in the, in the bestest of ways. All right. Um, number two, Kung Fu Kenny. I mean, oh. it, it is what it is. I'll take number two from you. Uh, pause, pause. Hey, yo, yo. That was crazy. Hey. Yo, take this nigga's drink away. Take his phone away. Take the mic yo. away. I'm gonna, I'm, I, I'll Put just, this nigga out the studio. I'm fucking I, with you. I, I'll, I'll just move the mic away from him. It's You're out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to go. <laughs> go home. Hey. Dini and I will finish the show. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Walt, you want to take a spot? Because I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> Carry on, Dini. I mean, as much as we shit on Kendrick, as much as I shit on Kendrick. Why did you say a lot of shit after that? I sh- <laughs> as much as I shit on Kendrick. You know what? The number two is going on over here. Hey, yo. Oh, that's, that's the big <laughs> Right. I mean, say what you want about Kenny, man. I mean... Classic albums. Damn's a classic. Good Kid Mad City is a classic. Like To Pepper Butterfly is a classic. Sin believes that. And and a lot of other white people. But it's a good album. You get what I'm saying? Leave Walt That's- alone. <laughs> <laughs> Salute to the homie Walt. But um I I mean Real quick, to Pimp Butterfly is as, as brilliant as it has as good they music. Say it. Critical but acclaim wise, it's up there. It it's, it's good I don't music. like it, but as far as general it's, critical acclaim, it's up there. But it's one, it's one of the highest rated in. albums ever, bro. It, it it put the finger on the pulse. You get what I'm saying? But I can't say I can't say much more about that nigga. Like everybody knows he's mm. the he's the showgun of today. He's the one that got these niggas trembling, sash nails, you know what I'm saying, trying to figure shit out. So <laughs> Kung Fu Kenny, you get what I'm saying? 
and no, positive same session of all sessions. Number one. <laughs> I don't want to man. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, Sim. Um, Drizzy, I, I I feel like it's not even really an argument. Sin, I mean, Drake, I mean, like, Jarv just gave you the numbers. Like, everybody else is in the 40 millions, you know what I'm saying, with their numbers. He's in, what, 100? It was 180. 180 plus. 180. You get what I'm saying? The Sonics, the bars when you want them, the ability to turn the club upside down when he wants to, the ability to, like, literally, well, outside of this situation going on with Kendrick, like, really just have the whole game in a frenzy. The minute he does respond, the game will be in a frenzy again. I mean, just what has he not done? Might might be, damn, that's, that's hard to say, yeah, might it. be the most complete mm. artist that we've had in hip hop. When I say complete, it's that he can he can just do things that other niggas can't do. If like Hov came out and made Hotline Bling, like we would be up in arms. You get what I'm saying? He just can do things that most artists just can't do without losing credibility. Like if any other nigga did that weird shit with the with the the hair berets or shit like that. Nah. He's, it's not sanctioned behavior, though. What I'm, what I'm saying, these niggas would be over. Okay. You get what I'm saying? He can survive it, it all. It wouldn't be a fingernail pain. It wouldn't be a conversation. It'd just be trash him. He can survive it all because, you know, at the end of the day, like I always say, the music is going to trump everything, bro. Like, you don't think he gets away with, with being corny because he's not taken seriously as a tough guy or a hustler or a drug dealer, a businessman. He's just Drake. This might sound crazy. He's, Shout out to you, Drake. But I, Drake is naturally a goofy. And I don't mean to say goofy like you're a goofy what, nigga. I mean like... Which one of y'all no, was the one who said... You can say he's a goofy. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> which one of y'all was the one who said that Drake was tofu? That was an early round table ball. Oh, shit. I think that, that was I think, you. No, no. I think that was you, Dean. Tofu? You're, you're the, you're the Mo- one yeah, that has the, mold, the, the food was, metaphors. Yeah, it was me. Because it was moldable and you could do anything with it. Right. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's... <laughs> that sounded crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. But like, he just... He's the KD of hip hop, like you know what I'm saying. Like you could just take him out of a situation, put him in another situation. It's a championship team, mm-hmm. and and I just feel like you really can't lose with him outside of the situation with Kendrick Lamar in the future. But mm-hmm. outside of that, I mean, Drake checks off every box there is to check off. Survive ghost well, riding allegations. He doesn't check off every box. What what what, what box, box is not checking check. off? All right, he, so so he, he, here's my question. I was thinking about this uh, a few days ago. He he draws a lot of comparisons to Michael Jackson, right? Right, mm-hmm. for better or worse. For better or worse, right? In, ter- in terms of like uh, the the numbers, the mm-hmm. hits, you know, what I mean, the 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 catalog, the resume. Um, but even Michael Jackson had songs like "Heal the World," "Man in the Mirror." You know what I mean? Um, he had one other one, and I can't remember right now. But he he had songs where like he. He was a fucking. He, he wasn't just a pop star. He was a fucking human being on think, the record. Like he really cared care about, about shit. Us. You know what I mean? What? I think that's a Michael Jackson. You mean they don't really care about us? Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Thank you. Um, Drake, Drake, Drake has never cared about a goddamn thing on record. You know what I mean? He doesn't talk about anything. He's he's one of the most vapid artists of all time. You know what I mean? He he makes he, he makes his hits. You know what I mean? He, he's good for a good time in the club, but outside of that. You know what I mean, and and he's get he's getting over in the era where, I guess that's all people really care about. But once upon a time, people cared about like, you know what I mean, like like an opinion, a human opinion on something that's going on in the world. You know what I mean, and all, all the greats have done it. You know what I mean, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder. You know what I mean, Nas and Jay. Even little baby Pac, gave you that little that little one. The, song, even little baby saying? gave you yeah. a little something. You know what I mean? Drake's never done it, so. If that's important to you, I, I respect that. Okay, that's, that's, that's not important box. to you. That's up to you. No. But I mean, he's Canadian. A message. He, <laughs> he talks about Toronto issues. Does it connect to the American struggle, bro? He talks about the dogs them in Toronto. The sixes. He talks no, about man there, in no, Toronto. There's no, there's no Canadian struggles. There's a lot of water. You know what I mean? There's, nice no, is, there's no global issues you can talk about? Like, no. no I mean, do, you, do you want that Canada from him? No, sir. Your own world. <laughs> sin, you wouldn't want that from him if, you if you've ever met a Canadian. Not at yet. this point. <laughs> How many? Not at this point. Because at this point, it would be forced. I, look, wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even believe fuck you. Fuck it. Let's get into the podcast. It, it, ju- it would just be because, like, you heard me say it on the podcast, and now you want to fucking do it. To pro- pro- but, point. Sin, how many Canadians have you heard talk about world issues on a grand scale? Them niggas stay out the fucking way. I don't even know that many Canadians, honestly. Okay. Outside of <laughs> I mean. All right, so let's get the Mason's list. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are off the rails here at the Rap Round Table. 
Uh, so Macito couldn't be with us tonight, but he wanted to make sure that his voice was heard Macito. with this top five blog era list. So I don't know. I'm I'm assuming that was the orders from five to one. So I'm gonna go from one to five because he likes to go from one to five for whatever reason. So obviously Ovio Capo himself number one is Drake. Drizzy. You know, it's self-explanatory. Number two, he has ASAP Rocky. You lost me, bro. <laughs> you lost me. I get it. I get it, Mace. I do get it. Now I'm. You get it. I do. I also That's get his it. Age. I also get it. Because <laughs> I let's go back in the time machine, guys. Remember when New York was really at the bottom of the, the barrel? We were scraping the the, the the rust off the barrel. Yeah. ASAP got really popping, and it, there was a lot of write ups about the eight. Not even the ASAP mob. ASAP Rocky. When peso yeah. dropped, bro. Peso went crazy. Oh my what, God. It was pe- what was other record was peso and the other one. It was purple. Purple. Pesos, wait, 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 wait. pesos, and the other one was um with the with the with the the raspy, um damn how that should go. The space ghost made the beat. I know you, 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 Man, everything is purple. Go ahead, I'm everything I'm is purple. Mm-hmm. Swag, purple swag, purple swag. It's not purple that swag. one. It was pesos or something else. But we go. Send look up his first couple of singles. But yeah, I agree with Mace with ASAP Rocky because. At number two, I mean, yeah, I get it. He was a he was that nigga for a while. Deal, got your man's on the record. He got the, was, remember when Bun B was one of the biggest niggas in rap, and he had the Bun B co-sign, and there was this whole thing about he's the New York guy <laughs> with the Texas swag mm, got from Drake Harlem. And Kendrick on the record, bro. Drake, fucking problems. One of the biggest records yeah. in the club Come at on, the time. Bro, like. like he was that nigga for a I nice little while. He's Rihanna's baby father. Like, what does and, that I'm, have and, to do with and I'm gonna come clean. I'm, I'm we, we gonna get on our chatty boys for a second. <laughs> you couldn't tell me that Riri wasn't gonna end up with some light skin, bright skin nigga. Facts. <laughs> for ASAP Rocky, for the brown skin niggas all over the world to pull Riri Cedar up. Was it three times now? It's a big win for New York. Yo, listen, New York. You know what I mean? <laughs> big win. Beyonce, Rihanna. Are, are you talking about Goldie? Goldie. Goldie. You know what I mean? Like d- d- these guys I said, it must be. <laughs> Shout out to New York for for, for for pulling off two of the the baddest in, yeah. in, in the industry. Had you it. think there's gonna be any allegations for ASAP? Like, never mind. But anyway, so Brooklyn ASAP- and Harlem too. Brooklyn and Harlem. <laughs> Shout out to them niggas. ASAP Rocky, number two on the list. Mace, you know sometimes you be full of shit, <laughs> but in, in this regard, bro. I got to respect Nah, he's still it. full of shit. Nah, I get it. I totally thing. understand. I, 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 I respect it in the, in, the, in the top five. But two? If we talking about... Ahead of Kenny? Dr- yes. If we talking about no. just straight up... Dr- you know, let's, let's, Absolutely. Let's use the sports analogies. There was more hype behind ASAP coming into the league than Kenny, bro. It was. Yeah. And then, then what happened? He was one of the pillars of the blog era. And then what happened? Where'd he go? He's a megastar in fashion. Yeah. Where's the music? I, huh? That's what we're, that's what we're still talking about, right? He, he, he lost it in Sweden when he got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> but um, number three, this is why Sissy is upset. He has Kendrick Lamar. You know what I mean? I don't see the problem here. What's yeah, the problem? His list. It's, <laughs> his list. It's his list. This is why he didn't show up today. <laughs> This is exactly why he didn't show up today. In the pre-draft workouts, ASAP had a better workout than Kenny. You know what I mean? And that's all it was. And the music rang off, bro. Word. He's a lottery pick. It really Ken- rang off. Kenny was almost a second-round pick, bro. Yeah, I don't believe this. Yeah, I do not believe this shit. Yeah. yeah. I thought Absol was going to be a bigger star at first. Y'all do not believe this shit, bro. Yo, Fuck out of here. J Rock was a higher draft pick. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Yeah, schoolboy. <laughs> yeah, they had Kendrick. He was in the back folding clothes. <laughs> <laughs> now, Cole, Cole is the one folding clothes. He made a whole song oh, about it. Oh, shit. Oh, man. <laughs> that was funny. Um, Yeah, so Kenny's number three. Number four, he has Big Sean, rightfully so. Sean, mm. not in your five. You know what I mean? I think Dini, I didn't hear Big Sean name. Not in my five. Y'all disgust me. In my, in my, in my, you know. I fuck with Uptown. In my other, you know. Y'all niggas be hating me. You got got like three or four niggas you have on your list after that. He's in the the top ten. The other Brooklyn nigga had to pick Big Sean because y'all Uptown niggas (laughs) haters. (laughs) Shout out to Big Sean, though. You know what I mean? Big Sean, number four, he, one of the most successful out of the blog era. There was a big four at a certain point. Yeah. Sean, you know, made sure that that wouldn't happen. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? But, um. And at number five, arguably rap's biggest disappointment of the last 20 years. This guy had all the hype. 
mm-hmm. every blog, all the double XL yeah. write ups. We were just talking about this the other day. Source magazine write ups. What was the other one that was a big platform? It was ah oh, man, it was fucking oh hip hop DX. Yeah, he was on so. He was all over the blogs. Two dope boys. Two dope boys. Nerd at the cool table. Not right. Not right. You uh, name it. Yo, not right. Oh God, I'm, I miss not right so much, but I, dig- I digress. That was. He was in the goat block. He was the number one overall draft pick for all the you rap fans of a certain elk. Never lived up to it, but Macito made sure to not leave him out of the five. His name is Wale. Yeah. <laughs> And that's how a lot of us feel about his music. Damn it. He let me take his spot expeditiously on me back, mm. like relatively quickly. You know what I mean? To me, I look at Wale and I just see Eddie Jones. Like, we just waiting on Cole yeah. to come. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you did. Yeah, you good, but you missing something. You know what Damn I mean? <laughs> oh, that nigga over there, number eight? Yeah. Let's, let's. Sparks of greatness. There was Sparks. There was Sparks. There was When sparks. your old man just, is, is making songs about you, J. Cole. Not really good. But mm. the interesting part of Macito's list is J. Cole did not make his five. Wow. I, I wouldn't expect anything. <laughs> wow, like that. bro, that's crazy. Mace. What's that? <laughs> What's that, brother? How did Cole Shock. not make your list, bro? Shock, Mace. You know what I mean? Like, Another what's going on? Dead, wow, yo, bro. Ma- Mace, crazy, like, bro. Like, like his OVO brethren, is ducking the fade. Like. Mace, Mace is the anomaly. So, so Mace is protesting the rap round table because Drake is looking crazy out here. <laughs> Drake, <laughs> Drake looking crazy. Wow. That's his crazy. top five crazy, blog ever is looking crazy. Mm. He, did, he didn't want to, you know what I mean? Like, face up to the backlash. That's a good five, Mace. It's an okay All five. Right. That's a so good let me hop my phone from Sincere. So now it's, it's my turn for my five. So I'm going to go from five to one you said hide your phone from me. yeah i don't want you to see i don't i don't want you to see my draft Sheet picks mode. number five i know he kind of predates it but i felt like he was the prototype for all of these blog era niggas so he's gonna be in my five because a lot of these niggas don't exist a lot of them don't get the looks they got a lot of them don't get the, the acclaim they received early on without this person and it's lupe fiasco He's oh, number wow. five on my list. Yeah, I know, Sin. I know. That's not. That's not I know. I'm cheating a little I, bit. I, I, I felt so too. I didn't I'm think he was. I didn't think he fit. But proceed. I'm cheating. But I just felt like first couple of albums. Eh. Don't but, do th- that. but then when the blogs dropped, he was the champion of the blogs. My nigga, tell me I'm lying. First there's, couple there, albums. There, was good. There's a point there. Yeah, you know I mean, there's a point. I take him out of the. If y'all feel like I'm cheating, I take him out. No, nah, no, nah, keep it. No, nah, keep it. All right, okay. Fair enough. I would have. I got. I got Freddie. You got Nikki. Like, yeah. there's yeah. nebulous areas. There. there you go. Number four, S B Q. Okay. Yeah, cool. One of the few cool. who who lived up to his pre-draft hype, because it was a whole draft. To me, it's like the draft classes. Yeah. I always think about when I got my Maxima and I had the free serious exam and I heard hands on the wheel for the first time with ASAP Rocky. What's your mom? And, I, and I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? You know what I mean? Because at that point, I was very much anti-internet rap because of the ringtones. I can tell you the truth. Yeah. I didn't fuck with the blogs because of ringtone rap. I was like, I don't trust nothing coming from the internet. If you're a rapper and you're on the internet, I do not trust you because of ringtone rap. I didn't yeah. trust it. You know what I mean? Wait, I felt wait, like... Wait for that long. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Wow. I felt like it was a lot of bullshit coming from there. So I didn't trust it at first, but when I first heard Schoolboy... I went crazy. I was. I jumped out the window. I said he's better than Kendrick. I was wilding. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. It's a true story. I went on Facebook and said, "Schoolboy Q is who you think Kendrick Lamar is." You know what I mean? And since they told me I was bugging, in hindsight, I was a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but for for a good year and a half, I really believe SBQ was better. Number three on my list. Of course, we gotta have Big Sean. <laughs> of course. Wait. Yeah. Wait. Not number one. <laughs> Now, I, what I will say, just just for the sake of keeping the same energy, Big Sean got better post blog era. Yes. Like around the time Dark Sky Paradise dropped, that was when I was like, right, Sean's arrived, and I was feeling like he could probably move one of the big three out the way. I was, I think I, I might have said as much. You know what I mean? On, on record, I don't know what happened. He been through some emotional shit, but to me, Detroit Two's fire. The tape he dropped with his lady was whack though. I'm sorry. The tape he dropped with no, was it whack? Yeah, it was kind. Of, it was high. Right. It was kind of whack. But the joint man, he dropped in Metro shit with was boy. garbage. The joint did I he drop with, twin, with Jene Aiko? Yeah. He dropped the album with Hitboy, didn't he though? Did he? I thought he dropped some with Detroit Hitboy. too. Hitboy did a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, but the joint he did with Metro was ass. I'm sorry. So, but you know what I mean. But <laughs> he hit him. Ass, 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 uh, ass, 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 <laughs> ass, 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 ass. Good I time. Right, I walked Good right on time into and then. that, bro. And I can't even fight back. On but, time. And. But Sean, Sean for a good minute had a strong run. He had the ladies. He had the club. He's not take. He he's the least taken seriously of of the other the niggas that we talk about. And for some reason. People just can't take Sean seriously. I think it's just his, some of it is his voice. Some of it is his kind of cheesy bars. Some of his cheesy metaphors. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. He's not Wale. He no, they, leans into not, the cheese. They, they, they did have a tape. It was called What You Expect. It was the 2021 tape. It was whack. Yeah, that's that's what I was you talking about. Hit hey, Boy and I'm Big Sean. Oh, no, that was tough. I'm, nah, nah, you're right. I'm thinking about Detroit. Like, that was tough, but it, I, it was short. I was, can I tell you all the truth? Detroit 2 was getting so much rotation in my phone, bro. I didn't give a fuck about that tape. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. I listened to That's it. That's the one that had the long ass freestyle right yeah. with all the Detroit I listen, niggas. I listened to it and went right back. Wow. Yeah. 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 I listened to that tape and went right back to Detroit. Because I just thought that shit, that shit spoke to me personally. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But anyway, Big Sean, number three. Number two. This could go either way. <laughs> it's Kendrick, man. You know. It's Kendrick. He's number yeah. two. Kendrick, Kendrick. Like since said deuces. <laughs> I think Kendrick would have been number one had he not taken the hiatus. Because you think about where he left off 2017, damn. 2018, Black Panther soundtrack and the, the bangers. He was in a pocket at that time. I don't know. Like, how do you just leave for so long after being in that type of a zone? And I felt like he left and then he didn't. He, he didn't want to become a drink. He didn't have to become a drink. He wasn't. Yeah. He would, but he was. He, I, I feel like he was afraid he might be on on, on that trajectory. Did damn sound like some shit Drake would make? Drake don't got a damn no, in him. But I'm just saying, Come like, now? I, I'm, I'm I'm just saying, go, going by what I feel uh, the type of artist Kendrick is, mm-hmm. I think he he got he he flew too close to the sun for his own personal comfort, and he was like, yo, let me. Let me come back down to Earth real quick. Okay. That's a long trip to Earth, though. I felt like he... <laughs> I, I'm disappointed in him because I felt like he found that that perfect balance between the radio-friendly, friendly, the lyrically rich, creatively rich music mm-hmm. with Dan and that soundtrack. He was he was about to be out of here, like super out of here, bro. And then, then he just left. And it's like, because of that, Aubrey's number one. You know what I mean? Aubrey's done everything you could ask an artist to do. If I sign, if I'm Jarv Incorporated and I sign an artist to a label and I say do this and you can get that, he's done every. He's exceeded all expectations. Thank you. He sold the most. He's the most relevant. Sorry, sin. Most <laughs> relevant. He's the most actionable. You know what I mean? If you call Drake right now, your Q rate. If you stand next to Drake for a week, your Q rate increases. You know what I mean? Think about look. You don't, you don't think it's a, a, actually that sexy red is with Drake all the time now? Yeah, it's, it's emotion. Make they see, the they see the motion. They see the y'all, y'all keep, y'all it, keep forcing that. If, if, could you imagine, what, imagine what would happen to the internet if Cardi B and Drake did a record? Like, you know what I mean? Or if Megan Thee Stallion and Drake did a record? Like the people who are very actionable on the internet. Like Drake is, he's the culture in a lot of ways, for better or Say for what worse. You want. Yep. He dictates the terms of a lot of conversations. Whether people want to see him win, or it's equal amount of people that want to see him fail. He doesn't have a classic album. Kicks my ass. I don't give a fuck. Like, what you consider a classic, he might have a classic album for y'all pop rap niggas. But as far as hip-hop culture, what we love, the, the, the pillars that hold up the shit, he's lacking that. Scary Hours 3 showed us that he has it in him to curate such a project. Mm-hmm. And maybe if he does, we'll talk less crazy about him. But as of right now, he don't have it. All right. But he's done everything else you could ask an artist to do coming out of the blog era. He's lacked all these blog niggas. All of them, bro. All of them. Go ahead, Sam. Um, so real quick, so you would would you say up to that point where Kendrick took the break, mm-hmm. would you say they were even? Like, was Kend- it Kendrick? Was, if I could, they were right, I would say. I say Drake still had they were it. One A, one B at that point. Yeah. One A, one B. Yeah. All right. So since that break, uh, what is it that Drake has dropped since? All right. So let's say 2017. It was Dan versus More Light. Mm-hmm. 2018 was Scorpio. Well, the you know, album just 2019 it though, was Care Package. 2019 you. was 
I mean, 2020 was Dark Lane demo tapes. Check the features for those five years, bro. Kind of you'll see. <laughs> Certified Lover Boy 2021. Albums we Honestly, hit. never mind. 20. Like, come on, bro. So what? But the, I mean, you can say come on, bro, all you want. But, Not a but good music he, dominated, he dominated the space. His big record. Every year that you name, he had a big record or two or three, bro. If that happened. Records. It's that don't count. Regular records. It don't I mean, matter. it counts. All right. I mean, niggas, niggas gave, niggas important. gave, niggas gave J Cole a lot of props. And then your man came back outside of, and dropped fucking Mr. Mid, nigga. Yeah. So bodies of work are important. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers and which the Mid Steppers. Thank you. Mid God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so th- that's our top five blog era. I don't know how much our audience is really locked in with the blog era because they very, they they're very particular with what they like. But if you were someone who were locked into the blog era and you follow our show, we'd love to hear your five. Put it in the chat. Or actually, put don't put it in the chat. Put it in the comment section. Comments, yeah. So we can actually see it at a later date. Because the chat, it'd be hard to really scroll through and, f- and find the comments after the fact. So put it in the comment section, your, your top five blog era artists. But we got to move on. You know what it reminds me of? Talk what? Or what it makes me think of? Like, Im- imagine in the NBA where, like, field goal percentage doesn't matter. It's just about, like... Hiking highlight shots, oh. mm-hmm. just highlights. That's Drake. Could be because the percentage Could be low key is cold hard. too, bro. Certified lover boy. Honestly, never mind. Like that percentage is terrible. I said, I said the same but thing about it's cold. It's got highlights though. Like, he got a lot of highlights. It's like baseball. All you got to do is hit three hundred. You know what I'm you know saying? What I mean? And that's that's that, you're great at three hundred. Well, let's focus on the positive <laughs> shit. So, see the rap snob. Um, pull, I know you got that article pulled up. Yeah, yeah. During the week. It, it was it was brought to our attention that Nas was celebrated by New York City Major. for Illmatic turning thirty. Now, first and foremost, I feel crazy at the notion that Illmatic Turn. is thirty <laughs> years old. That wow. triggers me, and on a deeply personal level, thirty. <laughs> We're there, man. We're I'm, at the age. I'm toast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thirty is crazy. You know, you know what I mean? But beyond that, now listen. I just saw something the other day. King just turned 18 years old. T.I. T.I. King. Yeah. What? 18. That's 06, I think, right? That that makes yeah, me makes sense. Feel I mean, like, that feels like gosh, to every, me the early 2000s feels like yesterday to me. Like it doesn't feel like it was that far away, bro. Every day you live, some shit gets older. You know what I'm saying? That's pretty much. What, that's crazy. a bar. But um, yeah, New York City celebrating Nas and considering what he did in 2023 with Hip Hop 50, yeah, and and and, and the monumental events he's had. Now we got the situation with the uh, casino that's on deck, the Resorts World expansion. Now this, and talk to us about Listen, that. More, more flowers for Nas, man. Um, you know what I mean? Us Nas fans, we got to continue celebrating because for all those years that we felt like he wasn't quite getting the recognition, wasn't quite getting the flowers that he deserved. Uh, he, he's getting them, you know, in abundance in the last couple of years. You know what I mean? He's... You know, he's been outside more, uh, six album run, shows, tours, hip hop 50, uh, documentaries, uh, uh, business ventures. Like he's just outside like he's never been before. And he's getting like, and it, I mean, this goes to show you like you, you, you have to be outside for people to notice mm-hmm. so that you can get the flowers that you deserve. You know what I mean? Nice. Like being a, a recluse, uh, it, it doesn't benefit it, you know, if that if that's the type of person you are, it does not benefit you because people will just forget about you. They won't see you. And if you're out of sight, you're out of mind. You know what I mean? Uh, so for all of Nas's brilliance, him being a, a recluse for all those years, people were kind of not seeing him. So they kind of weren't thinking about him. But now that he's outside a lot more. He's getting all the flowers that he deserves. You know what I mean? So uh, right now he's getting, uh, you know, Illmatic commemorated by, by the New York Senate. You know what I mean? Senator uh, Jamal Bailey uh, was uh, celebrating the 30th anniversary of Illmatic. He was a Nas was in attendance for that hearing, um, and you know what I mean? J- Jamal Bailey went down the resume. He w- he was talking about all all the all the social and political issues that Nas has been talking about for many many years, for decades now. Uh, that you know a lot of the the hip hop listeners and hip hop communities might not have been paying that close attention to um but you know what i mean like when, when you have when you have somebody in the senate 
in government that grew up on Illmatic and grew up as a Nas fan and was listening to all those things that Nas was saying. You know what I mean? I want to talk to the mayor, to the governor, to the motherfucking president. president. You know what I mean? Like all those things, all, all the, the things about gun control with, with with I gave you power. You know what I mean? Uh, the the he he recited or, or referenced uh, a bar from the Y remix uh, that Nas was on with Jada Kiss. You know what I mean? Why they care more about a a, a, a student's braids than they care about his grades. You know what I mean? So all of those things. A lot of times we can feel like they're falling on deaf ears. They're not falling on deaf ears. So, you know, salute to Nas for uh, talking about all those things throughout his career, things that are important. And I, and I, and I, I, I challenge all the up-and-coming artists to follow suit in what Nas has been doing his entire career since Illmatic, since 30 years ago, uh, to talk about the important things because they're not falling on deaf ears. The people that are in charge the people that are in those offices, they're growing up and they're listening to that shit. You know what I mean? And they're in a position where they can make a difference. So salute to Nas. Salute to Senator Jamal Bailey. Um, just more more love for Nas. I'd love to see it. Uh, more flowers do. I, I can't get enough. Salute. Um, it's not much more we can add to that. For real. We just look forward to Illmatic 30 happening next month. Yes, sir. I think by the time this episode drops, it will be April. So we'll say Illmatic dropping, Illmatic 30 celebration in about a couple of weeks. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's we'll be 19. here. We'll be front and center to top it up about that. So make sure y'all lock in. Um, Let's move on, though. So, episode 93. We did top five Southern rappers. So, but then our five, you had some people like Pusha T was in our five. I think Jay Elect was in our five, mm-hmm. and, and like like some of y'all picked those guys. There was there was other names in there, but I felt like Pusha J. T, Cole. J Cole, Rose in our five, and a couple of people took issue with certain artists. So this is not a mailbag segment, but this person I felt like I needed to address him. Use his comment on YouTube to build a segment. You know what I mean? It's not gonna be a, a long time thing, but we we gotta talk about it, bro. Don't t- don't, so, homie, his name is Peso Two K One. He says these dudes are clueless when it comes to Southern hip hop. The fact that they put J Electronica and Pusha T in a top five and tried to claim that J. Cole wasn't from the South. This was a bunch of biased NY cats claiming to know something outside of New York rap, and they failed miserable. So, Peso, you dumbass. It's miserably. Let's, let's start there, <laughs> you, 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 you prick. You know what I mean? Anyway, so the, I responded to Peso when I told him, sometimes when we talk on the rap roundtable, it's not like us being pros like professional know-it-alls or 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 experts or journalists Mm -hmm. sometimes we forget the cameras here we just hear talking shit bros so like when we when we talk shit about j cole it's really just that we know cole's presence and what it means to rap but sometimes we gotta talk some shit for some (laughs) laughs that's what what we we do do. you know what i mean like he was crying in the comment section but the thing that stood out to me was him saying that J. Cole, nah, not J. Cole, J. Electronica and Pusha T are not necessarily Southern acts. Then I had another one. I want to find all these comments for you. Do I, do I have Yeah, I remember another one. Do you have to sound like a Southern artist or do you have to that, be just well, that, artists from the South? That's, <laughs> that's what it was. The thing. I think I deleted it. I'm, I'm going to be upset. But the gist of the comment was the person said J. Cole and J. Electronica are not Southern rappers. One's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. If I'm not mistaken, right? Where's J. Elect from? He's from Louisiana, Louisiana right? Yeah, yeah. That's not in the South. That's so much. <laughs> as as South Carol- as it gets. North Carolina is not in the South, bro. North Carolina is in the I South. That was. I thought that was. Well, I found state. it. Black Code Map says J. Cole is not a Southern rapper from the South, but not but none of them are Southern. Neither is Pusha T. Another. Right. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Rewind that. Rewind. Uh, Rewind select that. You want me to say it again? Like yes, please. Rapper. Black Cold Math says, J. Cole is not a Southern rapper. Wait, here it comes. 
from the south. From the south. But none but none of them are southern. But not southern. Hmm. Stay, stay, stay with me, Sin. Hmm. He says, uh, neither is Pusha T, another guy from the south with the East, east Coast style. I'll say I just mad. Another guy Black, from the south. Black Code Math <laughs> also has J Elect is not a southern rapper. So the rapper on table responded to him and said, it's tricky because when we say that, we get called bias. He says, I get it, but Atlanta, Memphis, New Orleans, Florida, Texas, those areas define the Southern sound and Cole does not fit in with those areas at all. He and Pusha T fit best in the East Coast, et cetera, et cetera. So I I, I brought this up because I, uh, we, I, we need to talk about it. We yes. got to talk about it because I'm, I'm, I'm getting more and more as I become not a fan of hip hop, but as a podcaster from New York who constantly gets put in a box because we're from New York, I'm getting tired with the, with, with, with the South because y'all yeah, love to talk bad about New York, but y'all got some of the thinnest skin mm. as a region. And now you're telling me that if you are lyrical and you leave, I got sent, I'm coming. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Cause I had, I got, I got a fry real quick. Cause I'm really, I'm perturbed. If you're from the South and you're too lyrical, you have an East Coast sound. But you the same niggas that told me that Lil Wayne is the GOAT. But you didn't call him the GOAT mm. until he adopted a an East, East Coast, Coast sound. sound. Mm. So I'm confused. Stone Cold is, is, is it? Oh, do you niggas just pick and choose who mm. the fuck is Southern and who's not based on how you feel about them? Mm. How the fuck is Wayne a GOAT candidate, but J. Cole not from the South? Push it not from the South? J. J. Electronica not from the South? I'm confused, Sin. Help me out. I can't help you out, bro. <laughs> I am just as confused and perturbed. Puzzled. Um, I want to, I want to add one more comment because oh. I remember there was one. Oh, so one, you was on it too? No, because I remember there was one more because I, I had personally responded to it. Um, so I went through my YouTube notifications to find it. Uh, Robert Green, fifty-seven eighty-one. Shout out. Said, ten days ago. This is not South. You're only picking ones with New York flow. None of, those, none of those artists were the ones that made the South run the game since 05. This is showing bias. Definitely sin. Me. Hold on. Let me, I want to ask him something before you continue. I, I, I got a question for this guy. Maybe he can, Maybe you can answer it. I don't know. What the Ooh. fuck are you talking about? <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Um, and he, he, here's my thing. My, my first point which is what, what I uh, responded with, is that if we were just talking about ASAP Rocky at this table, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And and we acknowledged that, you know, he came into the game from Harlem, but with a more Southern sort of Texas mm -hmm. flow and energy. You know what I mean? We still 100% claim ASAP Rocky. Yes. We would never in a million years say, yo, ASAP, ASAP not really you know what I mean? Like, he had that Texas flow. He trying to sound like UGK. Like, you know what I mean? Eight ball and MJ. Like, we, we, we're not doing that. Absolutely not doing that. Nikki's another one that, you know what I mean? She's She came up with Young Money. So she adopted a lot of that sound. Homegirls from Queens. We claim her. She's New York. So I don't know what it is about that region it, I, I can only attribute it to absolute 100% hate for New York that if any of their artists sound remotely like New York, like the New York flow, the New York cadence, bars, lyricism, anything that is associated with New York, all of a sudden they are excommunicated from the South. Yes. But that doesn't make sense because we never listen to Game who raps like an East Coast artist. We never say he's an East Coast artist. We guarantee that he's a West Coast artist. He knows, you know, we know. It is what it is. I mean, there's a lot you can choose from. You know what I'm saying? When 50 was rapping like 
with his southern vibe on Get Rich or Die Trying, did we ever hit, count him as a southern artist? When Fat Joe and like half of New York City went on a southern run, do we say they're not New York rappers anymore? No, we just say they New York niggas that got a southern sound. But at the end of the day, they're New York niggas. The same way these niggas are South niggas. You get what I'm saying? It don't matter how they rap. It matters where they're from. The point is they're from the South and they're nice. That was the, and most of the people fit the criteria. I had Future, Ti, um, um, you had, I I had Ross, Ross, I had uh, Ross too. Push a T, push I had Push a T. Cole, um, I, I forgot my other two, but yeah, all you, niggas who rep the South. Yeah, Push a T reps Virginia hard. J Cole reps North Carolina hard. Fucking Rick Ross reps Florida hard. You somebody try, try to tell me Virginia's not the South. That's Bruh, didn't Mace lay out that Southern state, the region of the South, like begins with Virginia? Some crazy like that. He did. He, he did. The you look at any map. You look, Google, you look at Google, any, Google Virginia. It'll say Southern now, state. I'll argue that Virginia <laughs> is one of the more northern of the Southern states. Okay, right. but base Mace literally gave the, the the caveat before he spoke about Virginia being part of the South. So it's like y'all hate New York so bad that if a nigga rhyme about New York. Or around like he from New York or from or from the East Coast, he's not sanctioned. In real time, y'all were not calling the Wayne the best rapper or anything when he was wobbly. Wobbly when he wobbly, was five hundred degrees. Like it's hot. Right. But, but the minute he went and, and, and adopted our sound, our style, our cadence, y'all southern niggas Yo, said look, Wayne is the goat. Where, where was all of this during? And she catch Ellen and swallow. Where I'm Lil Weezy for she. It wasn't non-existent. Like where was you it? Might've, you might have had an argument with niggas with a big Juvie over fucking Wayne. Which is, which is point number two. Shout out to Juvie. <laughs> oh, I, we love Juvie. Job already made it, but I want to expand them. You know what I mean? I, I mean, it wasn't just the flow. It doesn't. It wasn't just the metaphors. It wasn't just the cadence. It was also the fashion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dressing like New York niggas. Me Let, too. Let's be 100%, fuck it, 1,000% real and honest about Wayne. He, everything that put him in that position was adopted from New York. Mm. Everything. From the assistance with the pen. Come on. <laughs> and then, the and again, we, and we, and we've talked, we've talked about it here at the table. All those metaphors that you hold in such high esteem, we had heard Lord Finesse, mm -hmm. we had heard Big L, mm -hmm. we had heard Cannabis, we had heard, like, the those, those, but we had heard Cassidy Sin piecing yeah. together, but like. Sin, tell them the truth. We had moved on from like metaphors. For tell real. them. In like, what, 03 it, type like, shit? Like, by, by the time, by the time Biggie Drop life that life after death. He was the blueprint for what a well-rounded rapper should be. Facts. You know what I mean? Not just about like metaphors. Not just kicking it like Luke Kang. <laughs> <laughs> kicking it like soccer. What's that? Kicking, <laughs> <laughs> What's kicking that, like brother? Beckham. Like whatever, Yo. whatever way you kick it. We had heard all the kick it metaphors. Yes. For like at least ten years before that. All of a sudden, because all, all you you were uh, used to in the South was wobbly wobbly, and then Lil Wayne wow. came up and was like, wow. "Yo, let me let me let me kick some of these metaphors that's like ten years old." I don't want peace. It's good. Yo, I it, want problems. It's gonna blow their it. fucking minds. And sure enough, it blew your fucking minds. Yeah, because you wasn't here, you wasn't in the mecca, you hadn't heard them before. Mm. It was new to you. It wasn't new to us. So we never we never believed it. We never adopted it. You know what I mean? We we had seen real showguns before. Mm -hmm. Yes. So and, and and it's crazy to me cuz they, they they these these southern people would be the first ones to say y'all being biased. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that we're not attacking the south. We tell y'all our experience with this pod. The first thing they always say when we talk about certain shit is y'all being biased. Y'all from New York, y'all not being fair. Y'all don't y'all don't love the South the way we love the South. Woo dee woo dee woo dee woo. But it's always y'all being biased. Meanwhile, Southern act Nicki Minaj goes to Atlanta to blow up. Doesn't necessarily make quote New York music blows up. We love Nicki in New York. What are you talking about? 
We love ASAP in, in New York. By the way, the song I couldn't remember was What's Up. It wasn't Goldie. See me in the it was What's Up and what's Peso. Up? That, them what's two up? records was, yeah, was, was, was the ones. You know what I'm saying? We loved ASAP though in New York. You kidding me? All, we love 50. All the niggas who went south to, to make shit happen before they came back north, we loved them. We didn't say, oh, he's not New York because he he's not rhyming like fool snickers or some shit. We didn't give a fuck. You from New York. Big pimping. We loved it. So, South vibes. You know what I mean? But it speaks to the little brother energy for you to say, if he, this person rhymes like an East Coast cat, he's not, he's southern, not southern, although his <laughs> fucking address, like New Orleans is, is deep south. Like Louisiana, the state is deep south. And you saying because... Jay Elect chose to rhyme with an East Coast style. He's not Southern since when? <laughs> How? This is like that that like like displacement. Like you take like a like a Jamaican dude and, and take him to the UK, and all of a sudden he's not Jamaican anymore. He's a UK. Dude. Well, they like, do it like at twenty one right now. They saying twenty one yeah. not from East Atlanta. I'm like my nigga. Like just like as a New Yorker with Caribbean roots. Come to Flatbush and tell some some Flatbushian nigga he not easy. American. Yeah. He beat the shit out of you. Even if his parents is Jamaican. <laughs> Even if he was born in Jamaica and he came to the States when he was three. He here now. He's from Flatbush. He's not <laughs> saying he's from Jamaica. He's from Flatbush. Like, so, like, y'all got to understand. See, then again, we be talking to certain people. To know. We, we be talking to certain people who don't understand nuance. They just feel like wherever you born is where you from. Yeah. 21 can't claim fucking England, nigga. This nigga, do you hear 21 talk? It's a knife. This nigga is Atlanta as Atlanta comes. You can't pretend to be that Atlanta, bro. Although I will say, when he said it, when it came out that he was British, as soon as I looked at him again, I said, yeah, he's British. Yeah, I can hear it. Because the British people all look this like, they all have a distinct look. It's you a, know what I mean? It's a noise. <laughs> it's a noise. It's a noise, yeah. It's a bloody noise. Er, earlier, did you say uh, J Electronica was from Baton Rouge? Yeah, was it Louis, it's Louisiana or is it Louis, New, or, New, Orleans. New Orleans? Yeah. New Orleans. He's from gotcha. New Orleans. Before somebody out there comes yeah. for us talking about Y'all rap round table motherfuckers don't know what y'all talking he's about. From. And, and, and let's address he's that. Not, you said the wrong city. Let's address that elephant in the room. For the millionth time, we are not experts. We are going to misspeak. We don't uh, we don't ask y'all to agree with us. We misspeak. We're not experts. We just enjoy rap. We have a good time. We have a good time with the people who enjoy us having a good time about rap because they love rap the same way we love rap. Yes, sir. So when you come through wagging your fucking finger saying, well, you guys got the city wrong. Guess what, bucko? We don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> we didn't mean to fuck it up, but we're just humans and we make mistakes. It happens. Yo, remember when um, uh, I mentioned uh, the, the Rob O and Joe Cooley? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I said it was from Compton. Mm-hmm. And only one of them was from Compton. And somebody showed up in the comments the like, knowledge. he's from no, the the Bay. Other from Riverside. <laughs> he's not from Compton. Y'all, 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 yo, y'all New York motherfuckers. Yeah, sorry. Y'all get everything wrong. Y'all niggas will come to New York, come to Brooklyn, and ask where's Harlem. Like, Incredible, man. Like, somehow, <laughs> somehow we, we fuck up Bro. one nigga city and we're the problem. But I ain't gonna front saying, like, that's on you, though. I'm gonna talk a little shit. <laughs> Cause you was like, we gotta make sure we mention this on the pod. And you yeah. got the city, bro. <laughs> nah, it was, they they rep Compton. They show love. <laughs> it was rep- just it was one of the dudes that's from Riverside, but I mean, it, it's whoever the said other that guy was probably from was Compton. From, they sorry, rep- niggas probably was from Riverside who felt that way. Niggas like I'm not letting my. Well, see, we don't know out. how we don't know LA politics. Maybe Riverside and Compton got beef, and we don't know. Possible. LA is a whole different world, man. Tell a Queens nigga he from Brooklyn to see what happens. Free smoke. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it happens. We apologize, but again, we are human. We're going to fuck up. We're going to fuck up again. Bear with us. This is not the expert podcast. <laughs> this is the rap round table. We give our takes, our opinions, a, a, a couple of trips down memory lane about rap. But the conversation revolves around rap. If you want history lessons and shit like that, this is not the podcast for you. Anyway. Let's move on. I'm trying to decide what topic we're going to go to. Oh, Offset. Yes. <laughs> Offset. We won't spend too much time on this. But Offset says that Beagles is the number two greatest of all time group right behind Outkast. He put himself above, put his group, I should say, above Wu Tang, Tribe. The locks, mob deep. Nah, locks. I can't see the locks. He had the locks on his list. Now, the ones that he mentioned was I think the locks, Wu Tang, and the locks. I got something to say about that. 
That was the four he mentioned. But he's saying that they're the second. NWA. He didn't, he didn't mention it. Um, The homie mentioned the whole, the it. He was saying it, that was before his time. It's a little bit old. Yeah. I got something to say about that. But the whole concept is he believes that Migos is the second greatest rap group ever. Dean, you over there laughing? Talk to me. All right. So I'm, I'm conflicted about this because... Like in 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 my my right mind, I'm like this nigga's bugging the fuck out. Talk. You get what I'm saying? But is a part of me that's like, is he kind of supposed to say that though? You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, isn't fucking the the six nigga the off the bench supposed to say, table. yeah, I'm better than Jordan? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You supposed to feel that that the that's six, a yo that's that's a bench. that's a concept we especially in hip hop nah, culture where, where you're where you're the last guy on the bench. But in your mind, you have to believe you're better than the nigga that's the MVP. You get what mm-hmm, I'm saying? If mm-hmm. For some reason, you can't say he's better than me. I don't know why. <laughs> he's better than you. You get what I'm saying? We can see it. Stevie Wonder can see it. You, rem- you, you remember he was conflicted? I, I, I was once conflicted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to do the Kendrick shit. <laughs> he's wow. once conflicted. You know what I'm saying? But, yo, I'm just... No. No, I think he's... I think he's I think he's doing what Offset's supposed to do, man. You think in his right mind, gun to your head, who's the better group? He's not crazy, my nigga. He sees the culture that fucking Wu Tang has. He sees the culture that NWA has had. Fucking um, um, Run DMC. You get what I'm saying? Is he gonna say Run D- he's better? Run DMC's better than Migos? No, bro. Like, am I gonna say any podcast is better than Rap Round Table? No. I don't care who you are, Joe Bun. But that's the problem. You know, and we've run into that problem. We believe we the best, but the public at large expects a certain level of humility from from the common man. So. And reality, <laughs> you know, I get it, but I feel like, in a small way, if you lose that edge, you lose that edge. Mm. But you don't want to lose that edge to the point where you lose sanity. You get what I'm saying? Like so. to, listening to Offset talk is like, bro, like you're not being honest right now. But I get it. The whole thing is, I get it. You shooting bail. I, I kind of am Okay Because wasn't, Isn't this a conversation yeah. We had with Jordan Lucas The other day Where somebody asked him Who was better He said Eminem's better than me mm. And they asked him like, Are you supposed to feel that way As a rapper And he was like Well probably not But you know And I'm I like have a problem with that In his mind If he feels that way There's, there's a negative And positive about that He does, But there's a humility In that that only keeps you Better I feel like though Alright so let me For the sake of argument mm-hmm. Since we here I didn't expect to go here But we here How can you Reach your highest heights if you are comfortable believing someone's better than you, you, you can't. Well, I but mean, that's, but you're kind of saying no, he, he, you can't. He, well, because you think you're already better. So how do you achieve? He, how do you get he, better than the like thing you that you're have to be a little he, delusional? Is well, what I believe. Well, here's here's my thing. I th- I think it's about understanding who your contemporaries are and who your forefathers are. Mm. You know what I mean? With Joyner Lucas, when he said that about Eminem, Eminem is OG to him. So. I don't have any problem with him acknowledging that. You know what I mean? I, I think when you're uh, far enough removed from a certain era, uh, you, you should acknowledge that era. And you should acknowledge the greatness of that era. You know what I mean? Um, I would I would have less of a problem. First of all, I don't I don't have a huge problem with what, what he said. You know what I mean? Um, but... I mean, there's de- there's definitely like an issue that I have here in terms of like you excluded Wu Tang, you you included Outkast, but you excluded Wu Tang. That to me screams of he New York, he, he New York, exclude them though. New York hate. He big. He gave. He they're they on the list, on his list. But he put him above. He put. He put it was it was, it was it was Outkast. It was Migos, out, out, Outkast, and then them. Yeah, and then Wu Tang beneath them. Yeah, it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. Like but, nobody's getting Migos tattoos. But here, like, <laughs> but here, here's here's the thing where I can see we're looking at this as niggas who love the hip hop and the culture. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Offset's looking at this from they rap better. We rap better than these niggas. I think it's just like he's looking at what we've done over the last few years. I, a lot of plaques, I, a lot of platinums, I, a lot of hits. I, I get that, which mm-hmm. leads me to my next point. Who was the Migos contemporaries as a group? As a group? I'll yeah. I'll wait. Yeah, I don't think that I can't think of it. There was no other group besides Migos, so I they can't. had they had the entire field to themselves. They yeah. had no competition as a group. You know what I mean? You talk about Outkast. Outkast was competing against Tribe. Tribe was competing against Wu Tang. Wu Tang was competing against Mob Deep. Mob Deep was competing against motherfucking 
Uh, well, maybe not EPMD. <coughs> EPMD had their era. But EPMD was comparing, c- competing against NWA. Mm-hmm. NWA was competing yeah, against Soul, Run DMC. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah, yeah. All right. The field was heavy. Migos Absolutely. Was competing against Field Mob. Migos was competing. Yo, <laughs> chill. Field chill. Mob. chill bro. Oh, what's up? What's, what's the name of the Yang Yang twins? Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> this is like way uh, light years they, before these they niggas. They had their era way light years before, before Migos these niggas. Yeah. Migos was the, the last and only group. And to, the, to, to this day, we, yeah. we don't have another group. I don't think, yeah, there hasn't been one. That was it. So Migos was the the last of the Mohicans of the groups. They there was the last group standing. They had mm-hmm. the field all to themselves. They could run a muck, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and not have a single other group to compete against. So when he says shit like that, like yeah, you can't like I, when I take that into account, I can't put them ahead of Wu Tang. I can't put them ahead of N.W.A. or Tribe. I can't put them ahead of Mob Deep. I can't even put them ahead of Clips. Mm. Is so Cl- you, you like think, clips. I wonder bro. I wonder how like Atlanta people feel about this. Like if Atlanta's like tapped in, you, you know, know what I'm saying? They're gonna be biased. Nah, like there might there might there might be some nah, Shit. there might be some niggas. There might Most be some biased city like, in rap. There might be some Atlanta niggas that be like, bro, this is Wu Tang though. You get what I'm saying? There might be some niggas who are like, come on. Maybe. You get what I'm saying? That's why I feel like it's I would I would love to hear like an Atlanta. And, and let's a, not discount the locks either. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of great groups. Like the the only re- look, the the only reason like Look, uh, fucking uh, Black Moon. I'm taking it deep now. Black Moon. Like, the only reason Black Moon didn't blow up was because Wu-Tang was right there. Mm. Right next to them. If Wu-Tang was not there, Black Moon would have been bigger. They, were, yeah. they, they, they yeah. weren't good yeah. enough, bro. Uh, no, nah, they would have been a little... Wu-Tang yeah. had a little bit extra. They had something they had a, extra. They had a stranglehold on the culture. Black Moon, would, Black Moon wouldn't have reached Wu-Tang Heights. Not, not Wu-Tang Heights, but they would have been bigger well, than what they were. Right, yeah. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like, if they would have formed like Voltron like Wu-Tang did, you know so, what I mean? The, the entire boot camp is one clip. Well, boot camp, as not group, boot as camp. a unit... We could argue about boot That's camp. Because boot camp has roster. some personalities. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love me some boot camp. All right. Um, oh, shit. About to knock my juice over. Um, he mentioned the locks, right? Mm-hmm. Who else did he mention when he was talking about the groups? NWA. NWA. Locks, Wu-Tang, Outkast, and Migos. That was just... So here's the thing. And I've learned this in my older age as a rap fan. You can either say how you really feel about music and give your takes and we do that and we get called engagement farmers and <laughs> whatever the fuck else but we, we have our own taste niggas jump in the comments crying about our personal preference then you have the other side of it where niggas just pick the popular response the response that they know they'll get props for or is generally safe so if I'm fucking offset and I say the locks NWA mm. safe. Yeah. He he knows what he's talking about. He named the guys. Yeah. Culture. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And and it's like I don't I don't I don't take those kind of responses very seriously when it comes to rap. I'm not saying you gotta be a rap snob like Sin or or or, or a historian like 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 Coop or a Mike D's people who really do the knowledge. Or, or even like Coach, shout out Coach who do the knowledge. Salute. But when you give us to me, those answers are cliche. Like for you as an artist, and it kind of—I don't want to sound hypocritical. Like a shout out to him for believing that they are number two, because I believe in being delusional about how good you are. Because you can only reach to me, you can only reach your highest heights by being delusional. Because you got to, you got, you got to live up to what you think of yourself. Yeah. Gen- generally, is what I'm saying. But Mob Deep is right there. Yeah. You, my, Migos is not even Mob Deep. Let's be serious here. If we talk, if we talking about NWA and you naming them, yeah, cool, right, right. <laughs> yeah, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, y'all niggas is not NWA. Yeah, you know I mean? like West Side Connection, maybe. You know what I mean? If you want, <laughs> yeah, man. See you know what I'm saying? A wallet. Eight, eight, eight ball and MJG. Eight ball MJG is right. Thank you, sin. <laughs> UGK is right there. UGK. You are not fucking with none of these. <laughs> God damn it. What are you talking about? Off the rails. What are you talking about? EPMD is right there. There's so many collectives. And there was these were all group fuck gangstar. These were all groups. Are they even fucking with Red Man and Met the Man when they were a group? That that were mm. 
competing Come on. against I mean, each other. If he gave us all sound southern clash groups, we, we against probably each say other. he was wilding regardless. If he gave us all southern groups, that's why I'm like, there's no way for the nigga to win. Let's say he said um UGK, Outcast. Nigga, are they better than Goody Mob? <laughs> what? No. As artists, but I'm thinking but, I said they're thinking about the they're thinking about the out. motion. Hear me out though. I understand the motion. But that's why I let it with. You give the cliche response so you sound like you know what you're talking about. But if you really start to think about it, outside of the stats that the Migos might have compiled when they dropped the first culture. Because before culture happened and raindrop, drop top, all that other shit, yeah. they were just another hot rap group. They crossed over with culture one. But culture two was a bit of a dud. Mm -hmm. Let's call it what it is. Yeah. Me, uh, 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 Quavo went solo. Didn't quite work out the way he thought it would. Culture two didn't do what he thought it was going to do. Guys, man. And honestly, how thinking about it, how long was their run? How many years? We would say twenty ten, if I'm not mistaken. When did when did culture did the year culture one drop? When that did, was when, when they did, went. When that's did when Versace they crossed come over. Out? Versace, they for the hood. Versace was black music. When they when they dropped, um, what was it? What was the name of the song? When they rain drop, drop top. Bad and bougie. Bad and bougie. bougie. Bad and bougie was when they became a worldwide yeah. phenomenon. Shout out to homie from from ATL, um, Donald Glover. He's yeah. a nigga. Yeah. He's responsible he for all that shit. Shout out to that Uzi. Up. But you think about it, after Culture Two, Culture Two dropped, didn't do. I don't know. If, was there a Culture Three? I feel like there was a Culture I think Three. There was. I think there was. Let me just triple check. If I got a, it was right, Walt. You see Thank the you, Walt. There was a Culture Three. What did it do? Twenty seventeen. See, so twenty seventeen to let's say pandemic, twenty twenty. Migos had a strong run. What happened after that? They split up. Niggas went solo. Mad solo duds. Maybe they had some singles that went crazy. Yeah, they had that was straightening was on that. Straightening. Um the shit with having that our was way culture three, Drake, wasn't it? Having our way type shit with um with Cardi. There's, there's a couple drinks, Ain't do, but it didn't move, bro. So, Need it with Col Young Boy. Culture. Light it up with Pop Smoke. Culture to Culture 3 was 2017 to 2021. Mm-hmm. That's four years. Not enough. Ain't that ain't that Wu Tang's run? And now and Wu Tang had yeah, Method Man, yeah, Old Dirty. Come on, <laughs> yeah, come on. Inspector Deck, Ghost the Rizza, the Jizza. You had thirty six <laughs> chambers as as the Jizza. umbrella, yeah, for Cap, the arguably the greatest runner group has ever had. Even if you don't like Method Man's first album, to Cal's Fire. All those solo albums were group albums. Yeah. Come on, bro. I don't even need to name it. Thank you, Sin. So it's like for but you, you to say that, and again, that's why I mentioned Goody Mob, because then you go to the Dungeon family and what they was doing. You're not fucking with them. Do they have a classic album, Migos? No. That's what I'm saying. Like, Culture Wu -Tang, was close. Wu-Tang got classics. Mob got classics. Shit. In the South, Outcast UGK, got a classic. Outcast, Goody, fucking a Boy, MJG, they all got classics. And I know I'm forgetting niggas. I know I'm forgetting niggas. Shit, you go back to uh, Scarface ghetto and Ghetto There you go. Boys. Scarface and Ghetto Boys. You know like, I mean? now again, you gave the right answers for the for the common man who watches the show who don't know shit. But for the heads, it's like, Migos? Really, nigga? <laughs> Seriously? There's an argument that your style is not even original. Because yeah, Bone Thuggy. Bone Thuggy. You know what I yeah. mean? Right there. There was Midwest. Salute to the oh, mid 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 Midwest. You know what I mean? You from New Yitty? <laughs> Nah, Midwest. About <laughs> <laughs> to throw a stick at this nigga. Bro. You from New Yitty, right? Nah, Midwest. <laughs> Fraud ass nigga. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> Yo. Change your fucking bio. <laughs> anyway, Migos gotta gotta really look at like shout out off not Migos Offset. Offset, I respect the delusion, but be fucking for real, bro. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> all right, uh, let's let's get to the mailbag. Yo. You know what I mean? We're gonna save the other topic for for another time. I had another topic in the clip, but we'll save it. Um, the mailbag. Sir, yes, we got a couple here. Nothing, nothing too, nothing too salacious. We we keeping it somewhat peaceful on this one. You know what I mean? Starting it off, we got Gmail talk. 4947. He says, This is in response to us a lot. Oh, these mailbags is from the. I don't trust your reaction. Ah. 
Yes. He says, don't forget, Push will probably respond to Drake. Absolutely. We know that. We know that. Push your T's wait. Honestly, if Push T's smart, he's he's cooking it up right now because it's free smoke. You know what I mean? Since it's a rap song, this one is for you. Don Pedo 6023 says, true artists don't have to constantly P-P-O? drop pro- P-I-D-O. Oh, okay. <laughs> true artists don't have to constantly <laughs> drop projects. Kendrick will never be left no behind F-C. by the rap game. Yeah. <laughs> he stops everything with just a single verse. Drake can't do that. That microwave, that microwave music isn't timeless. Kendrick knows exactly what he's doing. Dot dot. You say what? Um. Look, I, I have to be fair. To say uh, Drake can't stop the game with one verse is it's unrealistic. De- depending on what he says, you mm-hmm. know what I mean. If Drake were to shoot some shots at Kendrick or anybody else, Pusha T, whoever, you know what I mean, it would absolutely shut the game down. Like it would, it would be talked about for like days. You know what I mean? So, I think that's a little unfair, but uh, I do agree with the fact that, or I, I guess what he's alluding to is that uh, sometimes we forget about Kendrick because you know what I mean. Again, out of sight, out of mind. He right. takes long ass breaks, mm-hmm. uh, and so we forget that he's there, and we forget about what he can do. You know what I mean? Not just. Lyrically, not just content-wise, not just album-wise, but, like, moment-wise. Mm. He can still create moments. And a lot of people have been saying, a lot of people have been saying, Kendrick, it might it might be over for it. Like, mm. it, Kendrick might be washed. I feel attacked. Mm. It might, you know what <laughs> I mean? It might, it, it, Kendrick might be on a decline. Kendrick is not on no type of decline, bro. Like, he just dropped this verse. We've been talking about it for a straight week plus. Put some, put some respect on that man's name. All right. You got it, Sam. <laughs> Big Classic with a K says, take a drink every time one of them says Sonics. Now, Dini, this is your fault. Because when we did, when we reacted, <laughs> Yo. you used the word Sonics. You, you, uh, maybe it was early in the morning. Maybe you wasn't you wasn't in your mode just yet. But, like, you, you didn't deliver on the future reaction like we thought you would. But you was tired. You know what I mean? Damn. Sonics matter. Like, we got to stop acting like... Like you're not supposed to feel the music, bro. Like there's there's all types of different artists. There's some people that can write a paragraph, and it's like the most amazing thing you hear mm-hmm. until you hear it. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And then it sounds terrible on a beat. Like there there is there is a, a, a aspect of music that that's there's, a huge part, bro. That's like a fact, there's an art to make creating a certain sonical experience that's not just lyrics to make you want to actually go back and listen to the music like some enjoyment some fulfillment that you get from the actual track you know bro like i'll shoot some bells didn't you say right there i think the divide with the schoolboy album is the fact that schoolboy chose to take us on a sonical adventure and folks wanted they didn't want that they didn't want that they, they wanted, wanted the, the bars and, and beats mm-hmm. yeah you know what i mean and i felt like people who got that adventure like when i listen to um ohio i think ohio was the song that pissed niggas off the most it's three different beats yeah, yeah. on ohio it's a, lot. it's a lot it's a it's a tough listen you know like, what there's mean? some songs that are conventional schoolboy and people Freddy, really took Freddy to those thing on that. yeah 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 you know what i'm saying but it's no i don't i don't no you have to it, the listening enjoyment is matters too like we watch movies with great stories great plots but somehow they just didn't make the movie look good the movie gotta look good too it's like anything else like it'd be the same niggas that'll just the first thing they'll do with jump out the window how she look you get what i'm saying mm. you tell them about you i got a girl how you're, she look you're niggas you know what i'm saying <laughs> no 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 how, no how how the girl is as an individual what's her life like is she holding it down is she taking care of business oh, how she look like you know what I'm saying? everything else is on the back burner that's pretty much what it is for the music how does it sound you know okay. what i'm saying everything comes after that fair enough everything yeah. real, real, real quick who, who the Lakers beat in that Ice Cube song? Yeah. <laughs> the Supersonics, yeah. nigga. You Come go. on. You talking to the right nigga. There you go. We got two. Black Cold Mav getting a lot of love on this episode. Yeah, he, he got a little shots earlier, <laughs> but now, we'll, you know what I mean? He said, subbed. Saw y'all on Twitter. I like the work. Salute. That's what it's all Fuck about. With you, bro. you see the clip. You get the show. You tap in. You like what you see. That's what it's all about. Thank you. He also says... That's our Sonics, by the way. Here you go. <laughs> he also says it's a big four and Future does have the stats. 
He's not a bars guy, but in many ways has been more influential in this era of rap and over rappers than the other three. At the street level, Future is definitely getting played more than Drake, Cole, or Kendrick. The big three will get more listens in the older crowds and communities but that are not black, but historically, those are never the sources of the music. Many people will not accept this because they don't like Future's subject matter. So I jump in and I say, this nigga spit. Because it's like, he laid it all out. Like, at the street level, it's kind of like the Eminem argument. How much niggas in the hood is really Facts. spinning this? Now, I'll disagree and say that you might hear a Cole. Of course, you're going to hear a Cole or Drake or Kendrick in the hood. But Not like if you that. in the trenches, Future Not like is huge. getting the spins. And I think that speaks to his general appeal that's kind of different from the other four. So when people act like we're engagement farming because the Future belongs in the conversation and the stats are there, the acclaim is there, the appeal is there. Do the knowledge. That's what I'm, gonna get. I'm bringing that back. Do the knowledge. He's not lyrical. Before you attack us, in the, you know, so much niggas who are so uninformed and mad loud. Google is right there, bro. Right it's there. right there. Just Google some shit. Do the knowledge. Since this one is for you coming up. Okay. Also, my lawn's coming up. I'm pour up. Okay. <laughs> Raynell Jamal says, real quick, nothing crazy. Man. I love Sincere's takes. You know, a little positivity ah, at the rap round take. Like What's that. his name again? Raynell Jamal. Shouts to you, Raynell. Appreciate you. And I think that's it. That, those are all the messages. Yeah, I covered everything on the mailbag. A little bit of no negativity. Ah, salute to y'all. You know what I mean? I decided to go not not super negative, but lean more positive, more conversational. Because it's like we can't always lean into the, to the slander when niggas be like, oh, you niggas don't know what you're talking about. This podcast sucks. Rap clown table and all this other shit. People actually like us. You yeah. know what I mean? Despite yeah. some Surprise, of the nigga. Yeah. You might want us to be dick riders for a certain topic, but we like rap and we venture off. And when we venture off, the people who decided to join us on the venture, they like what they heard and they're still here. So when you hate, just know we're going to make fun of you. You're going to ban your stupid ass, hating ass niggas. You're going to agree, you're going to disagree, but you're going to be entertained. And be clear, process. disagree. But when you want some hating shit, because it's disagree, I don't even care if you dislike us. When you pull up on the hater shit and it's obvious that you don't like us, but you keep commenting, it's like, what is this, third grade? You, you like the girl, so you pull a hair? I don't get it. Every episode, negative. Like, why are you still here? Why are you still here? Anyway, we are uptown. Dini, Dini and I having a blast. The weather in New York is turning. The ladies are looking extra right. special, right. extra right, and they, and and they feeling a little conversational. <laughs> we 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 get to deep in Harlem. We almost a Spanish Harlem. We bump into Sincere. He got his cuff right. He got everything right. But some vagrant decided to step on them <laughs> fucking petunias. He done spent the whole season growing them shits. Now he's living. And he needs mm. you too. Get off my lawn. Okay. Uh, now, as I've been doing as of late, there, there's a couple of petunias that's you know still up. They didn't step on all of them, so uh, there's a, a a few salvageable flowers uh, that I would like to give out right now, right? And that like when I first started doing the the flowers for my lawn thing, I, I was thinking of doing it more so for like. Uh, all the artists that may not have gotten the love in their time, you know what I mean? But I got to give flowers to a newer artist right now. Jay Skis. Oh, shout out. I finally spun the Jay, the new Jay Skis project. And I don't know what took me so so long. There was other projects that I, you know, I've been, I've been listening to. We Obviously, we've been talking about the, like the, the Kendrick thing uh, from the Future album for so, some time. Um, and I just kept, I kept getting distracted away from the Jay Skis project. A uh, testament of the times uh, with producer uh, Superior. Ah, it's a dope project, man. It might be one of my favorite projects of this year so far. Um, production by Su producer Superior, dope as fuck. Um, I even heard some uh, familiar samples that I know I've worked with in, in my beats. So, you know, we have a similar ear shots to that. Um, but I, I got to give... Most of the flowers here, not not to take anything away from Superior, but Jay Skis, I feel, is one of the better lyricists that we have in the game right now. Uh, under the Conway umbrella, you know what I mean? Drum, Drum work. work. Um, Jay Skis is nice, but it's not just that he's nice. It's that he he's able to, you know what I mean? Like, he's able to mix more introspective, 
introspective and thoughtful lyrics with uh, a certain level of bravado. And that's mm. a tough mix mm -hmm. to really pull off. You know what I mean? Usually when when you're, you know what I mean? When, when you have a certain level of bravado, a, a certain aggressive energy, uh, you spend a lot of like, you know, drug and gun bars, right? But when you get a little bit more introspective and thoughtful, you know I mean, you, you pull back on that aggressive energy. He's able to, you know what I mean, mesh the two together in a way that um, it, it, I think is unique, uh, especially in, in, in today's time. You know what I mean? Um, his delivery is sharp. He's confident. Um, he, he had a couple of uh, uh, songs in there that had, like, some really good uh, themes. And, and, and he, he had this one one uh, song about uh, questions that, that uh, reminded me of that common song with most Def from, from, like, Water for Chocolate. Like, I was impressed. Suffice to say, I was very, very impressed with this project. Um, I want to hear more from this guy. Uh, shouts to Jay Skis. Shouts to Superior on the beats. Uh, it's a dope project. Uh, Jay Skis, I feel, is like one of them ones right now. You know what I mean? Now. So flowers to them. Or, well, to both of them, but yeah. Jay Skis for sure. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Now, somebody done pissed me off. Mm. And they've pissed me off before. So I got to kick him off my lawn again. Now, we talked about some, you know what I mean? Some some women uptown looking nice, looking right. You know what I mean? The person I'm going to kick off right now is not one of those. Sexy Red got to get off my lawn again. Oh, yeah, and baby. I know that oh. I've kicked off my lawn before. <laughs> Like listen, listen, listen. But she done pissed me off again, man. Oh like, and look, I'm not, I'm not trying. Like, <laughs> I, I swear to you, sometimes I, I don't, I, I try not to be such a snob. But this sexy red wave, it's to the point where I feel like it's some, some type of conspiracy, bro. Like it's a C O N spiracy. You know what I mean? Like, like. <laughs> I, like I, it almost feels like when the CIA dropped crack in the hood back in the '80s, bro. Like that's the type of feeling that I get from Sexy Red. You know what I mean? So she dropped a new song along with a video called "Get It Sexy." You know what I mean? Uh, Shouts to Take Keith on the beat. That's probably the only thing that I kind of fucks with Whoa. on that song. The Take Keith beat is kind of tough, so he might get a pass. Catchy. But Sexy Red herself, her rapping, her whole persona, her image. Uh, and not only that, bringing in Soldier Boy and Homeboy from D4L. What's his name? Fabo? Uh -huh. From D4L? Fable. Fabo. Fabo. Fabo from D4L. What's in that? <laughs> into the video. What's that, brother? I love you, daddy. Like, she's single-handedly trying to bring back the trashest era of rap mm -hmm. in all time. You know what I mean? And it, it, and again, this is I'm not this con conspiracy theory guy, but at a time when we've talked about it here, we talked about it today, where bars are coming back into the forefront. You know what I mean? Content is coming back into the forefront. You know what I mean? Uh, you know what I mean? We got, we got Kendrick Lamar... Uh, throwing shots at J. Cole and Drake. Mm -hmm. The big three is trying to like, you know what I mean, bring some of that that classic bar energy back into the game. And here comes Sexy Red. I'm your favorite ho. With the <laughs> talk about <laughs> booty holes and coochie holes again. Like that like that's all she could talk about. Bringing in motherfucking soldier boy. Bringing in D4L, again, a throwback to the most trash era of rap in all time. Mm, mm, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm done with it. I'm tired of it already. Like, it's, it's, I think it's been less than a year since she came on the scene. Yeah, bro. Uh, I'm, I'm over it. And then, and then to top <laughs> it all off, to top it all off, <laughs> Drake and his cosplaying <laughs> ass all up in the video. Uh -huh. Talk about she cute. When she looked like Shanene. What do you mean by that? Like, come on, man. Like, I'm 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 done with all of it. I'm tired of it, man. But sexy red gotta get off my lawn. Get off uh, my lawn. 
fucking uh, Soldier Boy got to get off my lawn. Why Soldier got to get off? The me? whole D4L and Drake, Fabo, Fabo, Fabo. Yes, got to get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. And by association, just because he's up in the video cosplaying. Oh no, Drake got to get off my lawn, bro. Get off my lawn. You all up in the video? Where's the balls at? Where's the response to Kendrick? Where's that at? Get in the studio. Get out from in front of the camera. You on stage, uh, fu- fucking giving yourself pep talks. You got you got your fucking Twitter, Instagram fingers fingering. Pause. Hey. 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 Or maybe I mean maybe for Drake is not pause. I don't know. Yeah. Eh. Calling niggas pussy that he would never say to their face. Bro, get in the studio. Drop them bars. You know what I mean? It's been way more than four days. Mm. You, you yo, you spun you spun the black four within four days for Meek Mill. Mm. Where's that energy for Kendrick? Come on, man. I will say though, you know, just to shoot Drake some bail, you know, sexy had a little baby. She filled out a little bit. Them yams is, you know, maybe. Oh, uh, come on, don't do it. <laughs> Maybe he want to say, hey, 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 that booty meat. Hey, 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 at the booty cheeks. <laughs> nah, fuck Sexy Red. Yo. Respectfully, the music, like, I don't know her personally. I think I'll be friends with Sexy Red, like, as a she person. She like a cool nah, like a great time. But the music is ass. You got to go. Keep it's it. Keep terrible. But if Aubrey's lingering, it's because she done filled out a little bit. And he probably thinking, you know, you know, I got you know, Adonis might need some company. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, this has been another Yo. fire episode of the Rap Rounds. It was episode 94. Appreciate y'all again. With all these podcasts out here, niggas are trying to defund podcasts on the internet every day. With all these podcasts out here, the fact that y'all choose us. Consistently, religiously, you spend the money, you donate, you help to build a brand. Thank you. We'll keep going forward. We're going to keep attacking. 15K is on the way, which means that once we get to 15K, then we're looking at 20K. You dig? The road. The, next stop. the road. We, Never ends. As 15K approaches, we get getting our tickets punched. No, 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 no. Don't forget, we won already. We won. We could just stop here. Yeah, no. we don't have to pot anymore. According no, to the, according won. to the, to the. We won the game. Oh. Not at all. What game? <laughs> what the, <laughs> crown, the crown was handed to us, so it's over. We won. According to the, you Fuck know. Yeah, he trying he try to kill us right now. You know what you I mean? He, he formed his new team. Everybody exactly. is playing. That means we got to stay. Man. You know what I mean? What, what was stay that? On our so, course. Twenty K is the we, next stop. What was the, that? Somebody said on the wire. We like the Marlowe done took over. Whatever. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. We got to. We got to secure our corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's all it is. Fifteen K on the way. But after that, we chase twenty K. And with your help, we can most certainly do that. We on the block. Keep like commenting. Eight feet tall, man. Keep sharing. Keep cursing us out in the comments. Keeping us accountable in the comments, showing love in the comments, running those likes up, doing the absolute necessary for us to level up. Like LP always say, the fact that they only add 15K or approaching is crazy. It's criminal, man. He feel like we have 50K subscriber podcast. Salute so to LP. Keep running, the, do, doing the necessary, and we will get there with y'all help. Dini the Balance, take us home. Yo, before anything else, hit that like button. You already know what it is. The Rap Roundtable, Roundtable Merch. Get you a hat, man. Represent. This is the beacon of the culture. You know what I'm saying? When you walk into the room, they're like, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's got a Rap Roundtable hat. Shout out to Walt. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Macito. Brother in arms. Couldn't be here tonight, but he's always with us. My guy. Sincere the Rap Snob. Exquisite Lawn. I might get some of those flowers and hand them over to Nas. You got a lot of flowers over there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, the, not, the, the rap round table, Illmatic 30th anniversary is gonna be a man, a, a, like, a, a meadow, nigga. This is, you this, know what is this is this is the culmination, man. This is what we've. You, whoever thought that hip hop could take it this far, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the bar. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Javi, the technician. The point guard, you know what I'm saying? Keeping all the plays playing, keeping the computers putin. You know what I'm saying? I'm DD the balance of the force. Apparently, I'm a snake favorite. too, but you know. Uh, <laughs> a, a snake. Mace. But you got the crown now, Jaw. Mace. <laughs> Listen. Yo. I mean, matter of fact, you're going to hear this the day after the live, but like, I'll, I'll just say it anyway. Like, we got to talk on the live. ASAP ahead Kendrick? of Kendrick. <laughs> Come on. Yo, shout out we to gotta you, talk. We got to talk. The Nona Rosa, we on the way for that pizza. We coming right fact. now. Don't close. The Rap Round Table. You already fucking know. Episode 94. Highlight it. You dig? Boom. Yes, sir. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Go to 100. Boom. Big hundo.